Dziękuję. Szanowni Państwo, konferencja będzie tłumaczona na język polski i na język angielski. Prosimy o pobieranie słuchawek przy wejściu. Ladies and gentlemen, the conference will Please, please take your headphones at the entrance. Thank you.
Raz, dwa, raz, dwa, raz, dwa. Jest. Szanowni Państwo, zanim... Ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, please feel free to use the headphones in the back of the room because, as you know, part of the conference is going to be in English with the simultaneous interpretation. We're still waiting for the startup of the online streaming before we start. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the organizers, the National Secretariat of Forest Resources, Environmental Protection and Forestry of the Solidarność Trade Union Organization, it is my pleasure to welcome you at this international conference, the future of environmental protection, forest protection uh, model future in light of the EC uh, communication on biodiversity strategy 2030. Many thanks, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, accepting our invitation. A warm welcome to all of you. Welcome, Michał Kurtyka, Minister of Climate and Environment. Advisor to President of the Republic of Poland in Environmental Protection and Biodiversity, Paweł Sawek, representing the President. Secretary of State at the Ministry of Climate and Environment, Plenipotentiary of the Government for Forestry and Hunting, Mr. Edward Sharka. Member of Parliament uh, and Head of the Council for uh, Forestry, uh, Mr. Ardanowski. Welcome, Eva Kozanecka and Teresa Pamua, Members of Parliament. Uh, welcome, warm welcome to the Member of European Parliament, Minister Anna Zalewska. Welcome, Director General of the State Forest Enterprise, Mr. Józef Kubica. Welcome to Rectors of, higher, of Universities, Mr. Krzysztof Szuszkiewicz of the Poznan University, and His Magnificence, Rector of the Warsaw School of, Econ of Forest Economy, Mr. Zasada. Head of Dendrology of the Polish Academy of Sciences, Professor Andrzej Jagodziński. Director of the Institute of Research for Forestry, Jacek Hilszczański. A warm welcome to 17 professors who decided to spend this day with us. Thank you very much for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Deputy of Head of the National Commission of Solidarność, Mr. Tadeusz Majchrowicz. A warm welcome to our foreign guests, Head of the German Council for Forestry, Georg Schlimbeck, with his collaborators. Sylvia Malagari, Secretary General of the Somal Industry of Europe, EOC. Franciszka Schier of the Tuner Institute of International Forestry and Forest Economics. Let me add that Igor Kalas is about to join us of the Estonian State Forest and Estafor, that is the European Association of State-Owned Forests. Welcome to representatives of the Climate and Environment Ministry, representatives of the wood industry including Mr. Davidjuk Tadeusz, employees of the state forests, directors, regional directors of the state forests, heads, directors, representatives of the Polish Hunting Association and the media. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this conference is being um, uh, broadcast online in Polish and English. A warm welcome to all those that have joined us online. It is my great pleasure to inform you that we have wishes of fruitful discussions on this important topic from Vice President, Executive from Vice President of the EC, Franz Timmermans, Mr. Janusz Wojciechowski, and Environmental pr Environment Protection, um, uh, Virginius Sienkiewicz. Let me also inform you that also a commission is going to work during this commission, including Piotr Borkowski of Estafor, Bogdan Brzeziecki, professor of the uh, School of uh, uh, Agriculture um, uh, Economy and others. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now hand over to the head of the National Secretariat of Forest Resources, Environmental Protection and Forestry of the Trade Union Organization Solidarność, Mr. Zbigniew Kuszlewicz. Wielce Szanowni Państwo. Ladies and gentlemen, the independent trade union organization Solidarność is definitely the biggest trade union in Poland. Also, an important social movement of times past and present that started its operation with the European uprising. Uh, bring uh, that brought about the fall of the um, uh, previous uh, system. During the years of its operation, it took up initiatives on uh, all, many opportunities at national and European level to protect the interests uh, of nation states and uh, their society. Another instance uh, of need to protect the Polish interest is connected with the concept uh, of the European Commission's strategy for biodiversity uh, in 2030. This is another opportunity uh, to, for such initiative, and it brought about the creation of an expert uh, group of the Secretariat uh, of uh, Protection. Uh, it was created by the National Secretariat of Forest Resources, Pro Environmental Protection and Forestry of Solidarność. As a result, there was a study uh, created, and the, its work was crowned with the organization of today's international conference on the future of the model of protection of forest environment in light of the communication of the European Commission on Strategy for Biodiversity 2030. It is one of uh, the links in the chain of presenting the European concept, but most importantly, this illustrates the um, social and economic effects in the presentations that are about to uh, be uh, presented, you will learn about a practitioner's take on the assumptions of the European strategy based on uh, the Polish uh, economic model and based on the model of the multifunctional um, sustainable forest economy applied in Poland. I was personally involved in many of the meetings. I came uh, to learn about many issues that were taken into consideration by the uh, committee. I came to the conclusion that uh, no reasonable person and uh, particularly the authors of uh, the concept are, are, no one is able to answer the question whether the um, proposed solutions by the EC, whether they will secure a safe future for the European Union, whether they will solve the um, economic, the uh, environmental uh, and climate um, challenges of uh, the earth, whether they will save 
environmental the environment without uh, leaving them without any active care. Uh, these questions are without answers. Uh, we can uh, um, only you know, deduce the uh, answers, uh, and yet there are decisions being made at a high level. Polish state forests managed by the um, uh, uh, state forest enterprise have been a model uh, in world uh, uh, forest economy for many years. And yet, at this point, the Polish reasonable voice in the discussion uh, is unfortunately unheard. The Polish Green Deal should be a model to follow because it guarantees the protection of the environment in a good condition for future generations. Moving away from this model should be seen as irresponsible. The state forest enterprise applies a sustainable multifunctional forest economy which is now going to be under experimentation a sudden move away from the rules of forest economy that have been honed for generations and it can lead to an ecological disaster. There is need for further going towards applying the uh, Polish model and uh, perfecting it on a evolutionary step-by-step -step basis so we cannot limit uh, such evolution to such fantastic conceptions without verifying the assumptions of uh, such approaches. Also, the current state of affairs suggests that I am right. There is ever more biotic and abiotic um, potential of disasters and climate change. Only after the causes of disruptions to the climate natural character can we take steps to step by step make the environment um, independent. On a final note, let me once again ask questions that will only be answered uh, definitely by future generations and partly maybe during today's conference. The environment seen from the position uh, currently of the EC, will it manage on its own in an environment degraded um, by generations of human activity? What is the um, future of uh, mankind if the current biodiversity concept in the current version, if it proves to be f incorrect, false? The, this, these are the topics of the uh, presentations that are about to be voiced. I am a strong believer that today's conference will see as its fruit a European debate based on the foundations of dialogue leading to the elimination of controversial issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, President, for introducing us to the conference. And now a voiceover to Minister Michał Kurtyka. And I would also like to thank you for the support uh, with the organization of this event. Thank you. Voice over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, ministers, uh, members of uh, parliament, and most of all, the host of today's meeting, President, it is your personal success and 
a manifestation of will and spirit of solidarity that Mr. Kushlevich talked about, where we need common sense, where we need to show that uh, as Poles we can be united, we can come up with uh, good proposals, we have solidarity that is needed. You've proved that. You've showed this to all of us, not only to all of us from Poland, but also for, uh, to our guests uh, from abroad, which shows that this debate and the input that we want to, to bring in the discussion is in the Europe's interest. This is the contribution that we want to make to protect the environment, to build a sustainable economy for the entire world, not only for Poland. Thank you very much to you and congratulations. And I'm also fully aware and I'm glad of the fact that uh, you, Mr. President, uh, you talk here under the auspices of your enterprise, that is State Forest. So, Józef Kubica, the second thank you goes to you. Uh, you are in the shadow, so to speak, uh, but you've also contributed to uh, the organization of this event you've got enormous knowledge and experience lots of green uniforms in this room and let me tell you before i ask you to give a round of applause uh, to uh, uh, to to our um, uh, hosts for me, the possibility to discover the heritage that we have in Poland, over 100 years of environment protection and care for our common heritage, uh, thinking about uh, next generations, well, I wouldn't have it without you. That's why I would like to thank you so much. And now, if I may, I would like to tell you a couple of words about an important topic. This is something that uh, requires wise dialogue. It requires contribution from experts, from specialists, so that we can answer the questions, the issues that have been raised uh, by, uh, by the previous speaker. This questions do not have a ready-made answer. What we need is a wise dialogue within the EU because uh, it is only a wise dialogue that can bring about uh, good uh, answers. We do not need to convince anyone in this room that as an international community, as a country, uh, we are ahead of numerous challenges, social, economic, demographic, but also the ones that seem to be most crucial to us, climate, uh, climate uh, challenges. They change uh, the reality profoundly. Environment protection is becoming not only an important challenge that is uh, uh, brought about uh, widely in the EU right now, but it is also a requirement imposed by the society, something that the society wants us to, to do. The question whether we are able to protect our environment well, this will be important for the future generations, for our children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And as the subsequent Minister of the Environment and the first in, uh, Minister of Climate in the history of, of Poland, I think it is important to remember that we have great predecessors. And I'm really proud uh, to be able to... Uh, to uh, learn from my predecessors. In our country, uh, the issue of environment protection has always been high on agenda. We can boast about huge uh, biodiversity, and this uh, biodiversity is composed of history, uh, which roots go back to uh, the Second World War or even before. But I think that the time after the Second World War was symbolic for us. 
1921, that's the beginnings of environment protection, where in the Białowieża Reservat, if I remember correctly, on the 20th of December, the first uh, um, nature reservats were created. And in 1931, so 11 years later, the first uh, national parks were set up, Pieniński National Park and Białowieski National Park. Park. Poland was the second, uh, after Sweden, country in Europe that set up uh, this form of natural protection. What was equally important then uh, was uh, protection and reinstitution of rare uh, species uh, that were endangered, uh, some birds, uh, some uh, mammals, uh, such as uh, bison. Among the species that required uh, particular protection uh, were, for instance, uh, beavers. And, uh, well, they were taken care of uh, so that they could have their natural habitat and they could survive. We had stock taking of some rare species uh, back then, uh, species uh, such as uh, herons. and. Uh, what was great success was restitution and protection of beav of uh, bisons, and it was in the Białowieża forest that this species was preserved. It is also important to mention that 100 years ago, the National Board of Environment Protection was set up. First, it was an opinion-making body, but then it, uh, on the 17th of December 1919, uh, Polish uh, foresters uh, and uh, lovers of tourism proposed to create the National Board of uh, uh, Environment Protection. And it is this very board that uh, between the First and the Second World War, so in the period in the year 1934, was the initiator of the first uh, act on environment protection in the Polish legislation. It also initiated the creation of national parks uh, and uh, reservoirs. All these activities uh, taken by our predecessors contributed to the fact that in Poland uh, we have approximately 60,000 species of uh, living organisms and uh, over 1,800 species are under protection. We have revival, rebirth of uh, such charismatic uh, uh, animals uh, such as uh, bison or beaver, uh, carnivores such as uh, wolf, which shows that uh, the biodiversity indicators in Poland are satisfactory. Areas under protection in Poland uh, constitute 32% of our land. Uh, this is composed of uh, 23 national uh, parks, but also one 1,500 uh, reserves. Nature 2020 covers 19.5% of the area of the country, which is higher than the European average. And forest ecosystems that we will talk about extensively today are the most valuable and the most extensive when it comes to the area of uh, the, the land under protection. It is 40% uh, of the protection uh, protected areas. Taking into account the heritage that we can boast about and the huge role of the Polish science and the representatives of the Polish science are with us in this room, it seems obvious that for Poland, for our country, for our government, this is one of our utmost priorities. And any discussion on the directions uh, of the protection of environment are very important today due to the climate changes uh, that um, that are ongoing and against this backdrop as mentioned by uh, president kushlevich we have two important documents that might have a tremendous impact on the future of uh, environment protection, not only in Poland, but in entire Europe. This is the European Strategy on Biodiversity 2030, adopted in May uh, 2020, and a new forest strategy uh, until 2030. 
uh, from uh, July this year. Both documents are part of the European Green Deal that is uh, supposed to help the European Union to face the challenges uh, related to climate change and degradation of um, the environment and transformation of the economy towards a more sustainable and competitive economy. On the grounds of these documents, there is this conviction that uh, life on Earth is based on uh, biodiversity and that nature is uh, important uh, for the health, uh, also um, um, psychological health uh, of the human being, but also it is important to be able uh, to face uh, the changes uh, that are ongoing, uh, catastrophes and so on and so forth. Um, uh, the 15th convention of the parties will take uh, par a place uh, next year. It will be devoted uh, to biodiversity. Unfortunately, it has been delayed due to the pandemic, but next year in uh, spring in Kuning in China, this will be a crucial moment. In this context, I think that It is important that the voice coming from Poland, the voice on the European policy should be heard also because the arguments are important and uh, forest cover in Poland are, uh, is really high in comparison to the rest of European countries. We've got high biodiversity. We know that resources of... Uh, uh, of uh, uh, charcoal is high in Poland. That's why the implementation of the strategies that have been mentioned uh, should uh, be done only after a thorough analysis of the consequences that this implementation might have. We need to answer uh, the following question. Do we want to choose products that are based on oil, on coal, or should we look for solutions that are nature-based? Do we want to sit on plastic chairs or on uh, chairs uh, made of uh, timber? Sh do we want to have more natural products at home? That's the aspiration of the society. We should not stick to uh, the solutions that were implemented in in the past, we should not bring more waste to our planet, to our oceans, and so on and so forth. Against this backdrop, there is a huge challenge ahead of the EU and the entire globe. And this challenge is to define which actions really lead to the protection of biodiversity. And against this backdrop, it is crucial to have a dialogue, the dialogue that is taking place and will take place, and the conclusions from this dialogue concerning strict protection. But we should note that in some situation, the implementation of strict protection, and we will talk more about this during this conference, Strict protection understood as lack of any actions may lead to deterioration instead of uh, the improvement of biodiversity. This has been visible in a forest ecosystem where lack of protection, active protection uh, under sustainable uh, forest management leads uh, to no possibilities uh, to prevent um, um, the decline of forests. If we believe that there is an influence of human beings on the nature around us, this is a backdrop resulting uh, from the actions taken by our civilization. And in this context, we need to answer the following question. Are we ready to leave those resources without any support from the human beings that might mitigate the negative effects of uh, the actions of the civilizational background, so to speak? Lack of action is also um, not beneficial if we want to preserve a particular habitat in a particular stadium, particularly when it is a result of the actions of the human being and if it is necessary to continue extensive uh, um, uh, management uh, um, in Poland uh, the ecosystems are quite specific they require support uh, from uh, humans for instance uh, the natural park in Biebrza I visited this park many many times and uh, humans are 
crucial there to preserve the ecosystems. Humans are an integral part of uh, such ecosystems. A year has passed since the biodiversity strategy uh, has been um, announced and we know that the statements included there definitions such as strict protection, such as um, old growth forests, such as primary forests, such as uh, forestry closer to nature is becoming are becoming to change and this is an outcome of a discussion uh, that has been taking place not only in Poland but also but I would say mostly uh, in Poland and I'm really glad that the in an increasing number of member states are, um, are prone to adopt uh, the uh, Strategies uh, proposed by Poland, uh, protection cannot be passive one only. We need to have active protection as well. Otherwise, um, the claim to uh, include 10% of uh, land area under strict protection will not be implemented. And uh, that's why I am really glad that this conference is international in nature. I'm really glad that we are able to talk about issues that are key for the future of uh, uh, the heritage, uh, the natural heritage. We can discuss it together with our colleagues from uh, Germany, from, uh, from uh, other countries. Our voice can be heard. We will be able to, uh, to set up a wise coalition uh, for the protection of environment and biodiversity all across Europe. We are well aware that operationalization of the documents, for instance, the creation of uh, coherent and cohesive indicators on the basis of which we will assess uh, the state of preservation of habitats will be key for the future heritage, natural heritage of Europe. What is also important for the effectiveness of the implementation of the biodiversity is the new legal tool that is about the recovery, restoration targets, that's how this tool is called. And despite the fact that the European Commission uh, wants to present this tool uh, um, at, at, towards the end of 2021, at the beginning of 2022, we will know that this uh, will be very important. Uh, we've got this habitat directive, uh, a bird directive, uh, um, uh, uh, water directive. This tool is about to improve the condition of forests and it is supposed to create a functional system of vivid uh, uh, tissue that will have this uh, important functions preserved on the national and on the global scale and this will be yet another ambitious challenge ahead of Poland and ahead of the entire Europe, ahead of the EU. But we need to remember that healthy, resilient and well-preserved natural resources are a guarantee for the development of our generation and the future generations. We are well aware of the fact that the protection of environment, protection of forests, climate protection is a necessity and an investment in our own well-being. That is why I've been following the discussion on the forest strategy with a lot of interest and I'm really glad that an increasing number of states share um, our view on this topic. We think that uh, an inappropriate approach, uh, approach at EU level, approach to uh, the forest management that is in the competence of uh, individual states will have negative uh, impacts uh, for the economy and the environment. We should note that in Poland only the uh, forest timber um, um, sector generates 3% of the GDP and uh, uh, creates and, and creates uh, 460,000 uh, jobs. This is of huge importance for the economy and for the society. If the strategy is not implemented uh, in an appropriate way, uh, 
this will deplete our uh, forest resources and uh, in a long-term perspective this will lead to an increase in the prices of timber and it will make it impossible to have a transition into uh, a different kind of thinking about uh, our living, about our houses, about our furniture. This will hamper I think the wise aspiration of the society is to be closer to nature, to live closer to nature, to preserve uh, nature for future generations. I would like to thank uh, very warmly if, um, and I would like to, to promise that I will be following very thoroughly uh, the work done uh, during this conference. Uh, I. Um, I gave, I, I've had a look at the speakers which are really distinguished and we should note that the consequences of the implementation of the European strategy on biodiversity will be discussed by Professor Tomasz Zawiłanicz-Wiecki, Professor uh, Jarosław Socha. And I'm really, and I will, will be uh, following uh, the, uh, your uh, your uh, speeches and I would like to emphasize the fact that environment protection is our duty it is a duty that is imposed on our shoulders uh, my shoulders as uh, someone who uh, should uh, uh, follow in the footsteps of all those who took care of the Polish environment in the past and also on your shoulders, representatives of science, representatives of uh, uh, lots of different sectors. And it is an investment in our future. It is key for a multifunctional, sustainable forest economy. And the role of Polish foresters is important, not only to maintain, but also to restore the Polish biodiversity. The, your role is uh, key, cannot be uh, overestimated. Which is why both documents that are of interest to us today, the strategy on biodiversity and forest strategy should be discussed in parallel and should take into account a very wide perspective. Uh, only such an approach will allow us to, to preserve healthy forests that will make it possible for the economy to flourish, uh, for rural areas to flourish. They give protection to lots of endangered species, uh, plants, uh, um, uh, fungi. And I am deeply convinced that in a couple of years we will be proud to say that we were depositories of this enormous heritage and that we were able to convey this heritage to the next generations and we contributed to the improvement of the heritage instead of depletion of resources. And I am deeply convinced that the Polish environment will stay healthy, will be one of most wealthy in Europe and that uh, the future development of our country will not uh, be uh, slowed down. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Minister, for your inaugural speech. Thank you very much for reminding us and confirming that uh, uh, forest specialists are those that uh, are responsible for biodiversity and the biodiversity is so close to their green hearts. Paweł Sawek, uh, advisor to the President of the Republic of Poland, now will take the floor. Thank you very much for taking the honorary patronage of today's conference. The floor is yours. Dear President, dear Minister, dear Ministers, Michał Edward, Director, dear Josef, sorry for addressing you um, so directly. Dear President Zbigniew, dear Members of Parliament, Anna and others, dear guests, dear foreign guests from Germany and Estonia. 
Firstly, on behalf of uh, President Andrzej Duda, I would like to thank you, um, dear Trade Union Solidarność, for organizing this conference and for this initiative. Thank you, Mr. Zbigniew Kuszlewicz and his uh, cooperators. Many thanks for um, this conference taking place. Let me address a dear welcome to all of you on behalf of Mr. President and once again thank you in the name of the President to Mr. Kubica, to Mr. Sharka and Mr. Kurtyka for, for what uh, was achieved last year for the beautiful planting action and for once again being part of uh, expanding uh, Polish forests. Thank you very much for that. I do not want to speak too long because I think that uh, content-wise today's conference is very full and interesting, but let me focus instead on a few issues since I have been given the floor. Historically speaking, like um, Minister Kurtyka said, we, Poles, have forests as part of our DNA and the tradition of environmental protection has been our tradition for generations and centuries. Now, going, uh, moving to uh, nowadays, after Second World War, remember that during the Stalin, uh, Stalinist times after World War II, Poland was one of the founders of IOCN. Back then, Poles found the courage to be a part of such an important debate. We were the only participant from Central Eastern Europe countries that was present at the uh, act of founding that international organization. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, since yesterday uh, the very interesting discussion concerning the Constitutional Court's uh, ruling has been taking place and it's, uh, it only covers uh, the uh, judiciary context. Why am I mentioning this? <coughs> well, because there are certain areas that are in the treaty or are not uh, in the treaty that are, you know, in the remit of the uh, EU law. And one of such issues is forestry. And this needs to be stressed also in the context of our foreign guests' presence that um, forestry is outside the treaties, which is a direct competence of the member states of the European Union, each member state. And yet, my observation is the following. Through provisions of lower level um, uh, legislation, treaties are being uh, uh, amended without amendment of the treaties as such. And the same might happen in the strategy of biodiversity and forestry strategy is uh, my concern. Because if we look at the issues of uh, climate and which is directly connected with energy, energy security, every uh, state is competent to form the, their energy mix as they uh, see fit. And yet, through the creation of the climate policy, uh, Poland's energy security was decreased through the emissions trade scheme and the ambitious approach and the non-ETS system. I don't want to expand on this. However, I want to show you that there is a certain mechanism within the EU where Poland, although has its security, energy security, uh, secured in the treaties, has to modify its energy mix due to provisions of the um, European legislator, which is why we move away from coal uh, although the treaty allows for, uh, you know, Korea forming our energy mix as, he, as we see fit. And so my um, concern is that forestry, as a result of provisions of an environmental protection uh, legislation and the level of EU, um, you know, might be impacted negatively. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I see a certain opportunity in the political scene, the European one, and I want to comment on that as well. Finland's prime minister recently said, stated very clearly that uh, she does not agree with the provisions proposed by the uh, European Commission. And we've also heard a very strong voice of the Federal Republic of Germany, also at the uh, European level, because Manfred uh, uh, Weber, head of People's um, uh, European People's Party, um, said that he, as a German representative, does not accept the approach that transpires from the communications of the European Commission. Poland stands at a similar position, Romania and several other entities. Now, by way of conclusion, let me tell you that it seems to me that under a reasonable approach to environmental protection, forestry, and such, there is a certain opportunity in the big vivid de debate. It, uh, you know, has been uh, covered by the whole debate that opportunity. But if we look at the, if we look at the strategy for biodiversity as communicated by the EC, we come to the conclusion that the communication for the two strategies that we are discussing have been very popular, and the most comments came in the two strategies from Germans because there are almost 20,000 um, statements from Germany in terms of biodiversity while the consultation on a forest um, uh, strategy saw 89% of comments coming from Poland out of 20,000 responses in the public consultation. And it has to be noted that Nevertheless, the European Commission, in the landscape of these consultations that were wide, widely popular, did not take notice of the German and Polish stance, and it was not brought to discussion, which would have definitely taken place if the consultation, in my opinion, had been carried out slightly differently. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, let me sum up by saying the following. The case indeed is uh, very serious, and from the um, stance of forestry and economy for Poland is very important, and the negotiation that is going to take place is ongoing, rather. And it has to be carried out very responsibly. And it seems to me personally that as of today, we are before the creation of possibly new legislation in the EU in terms of environmental protection, maybe within two, three years, that is biodiversity directive. This is what I mean. This will have, the, as consequence, probably, you know, uh, scrapping the bird directive of the 70s and the 90s habitat directive. So, possibly, these two documents might be integrated integrated in some form or other. In any case, this uh, is just allegations at this point, but I'm happy that this debate is taking place. On a final note, let me tell you that I believe that there is a big role to be played by trade unions and Solidarność in particular, which is represented in the European Economic and Social Committee. Sorry for saying this, uh, dear ministers, uh, dear members of parliament. It seems to me that the social party well, might find it easier in the times to come to take part in the discussion and the, it might voice more issues than the parties to the negotiation. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and I wish, uh, I wish you a fruitful debate. Thank you.
Bardzo dziękujemy, panie ministrze, za cenny jak zawsze Many głos. thanks, dear minister. Thank you for your remarks. Thank you for drawing our attention to the fact that formal legal issues at the level of the EU and the EC are going to be of extreme importance for the formation of the forest economy in the future. Member of Parliament, Minister and Forest Specialist, Secretary of State at the Ministry of Climate and Environment has joined us. Małgorzata Golińska. Uh, good morning. Welcome. I would now like to hand over to the acting plenipotentiary Mr. Edward Sierka, Secretary of State in the Ministry of Climate and Environment, and thank you for your patronage of today's conference. He's plenipotentiary of the government for forestry and hunting. The floor is yours. Dear Minister, Members of Parliament, Directors, Dear President, Dear Guests, Thank you very much for having me at this conference. I think that this is an important event, an important element of the discussion that is taking place around the key elements of Green Deal, that is the biodiversity strategy and the forest strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no talk of biodiversity protection in Poland without factoring in the active protection of our forests. This was mentioned in a wide context by my boss, Mr. Kurtyka. Let me just tell you that 80% of the forms of environmental protection in Poland have been functioning and are functioning in um, forests, that is, state for state-owned forests along years of activities of uh, foresters under a policy based on a habitat and uh, ecological um, assumptions. They have been providing access to timber, wood, environmental protection, and the third element of the multifunctional uh, forest economy that is uh, making forests available to the wide society. The success of such approaches today, beautiful, uh, rich Polish forests, to be used by future generations. This care and um, responsibility for the environment in which we operate as of today is what does not allow me to remain passive in what was announced by the EC last year, that is their uh, strategy for biodiversity. The assumptions, the provisions of this strategy have a significant impact on the health uh, and sustainable character of our Polish uh, forests, uh, the functioning of the timber wood industry and the whole forest economy in Poland. And this is why we have taken up uh, many uh, activities with Mr. Minister Michał Kurtyka to um, uh, express our critical uh, opinion of the biodiversity strategy and we presented the uh, remarks, um, uh, doubts concerning the uh, po policy on the part of Poland that uh, the provisions that were included in the biodiversity strategy. The first conclusions on the new uh, uh, forest strategy adopted in November last year included the uh, position of Poland among others, it has to be stressed and we hoped very much that that would be a strong statement on the part of uh, member states that have uh, big forest areas and it would be included in preparing the forest strategy, but this was not the case. The consultation, social consultation by the EC on the forest strategy that were concluded in April this year have clearly shown that it's, uh, the key aspects of the forest strategy are environmental components, economic and social aspects were not factored in, which were key, which was stressed uh, for as important for the growth of Europe in the, within the Green Deal. So the Ministry of Environment and uh, State Forests were part of the consultation presenting a strong and coherent position and the Polish uh, position was very strongly voiced in the consultations which was already mentioned. Many thanks for your participation in the consultation process. Your uh, participation has 
has demonstrated that forestry and the continuation of sustainable forest economy in Europe is extremely important for Poles. This strategy cannot go round. Key issues like further development of forestry and forest economy in Poland, possibility to actively protect forests and to develop rural areas through the creation of jobs and the um, protection and uh, conservation of forests for future generations. We did what we could and uh, our postulates were visible, clearly visible during the discussion on the forest uh, strategy within the uh, group of uh, single-minded states, including among other Poland, but also uh, uh, Austria, Finland, Czech Republic, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Hungary and others. These countries prepared a, a joint statement um, raising concerns about the future shape of the forest strategy and the uh, next meeting of forestry ministers in March uh, this year. And yet, our position was not understood as expressed by the group of countries. So, in June this year, Minister Kurtyka sent a letter to um, uh, Franz Timmermans and uh, commissioners uh, for energy and environment uh, and uh, similar, uh, which clearly communicated Poland's expectations in terms of the forest strategy. In early July this year, Poland joined a uh, letter of uh, uh, ministers of Austria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Finland, Germany, uh, La Lit La Latvia and uh, others. Mm, uh, that was a joint letter and I had the pleasure of signing it, among others. With members of Parliament, European Parliament, we um, made sure that Poland is visible also in the European Parliament. Our conversations with our members of Parliament, European Parliament, proved that indeed the forest issues of forestry are important in many discussions and that forest policy is a growing element um, of ongoing conversations. The strategy that was uh, published on the 16th of July is not a balanced document guaranteed, guaranteeing um, the functioning of a proven multifunctional model of forestry. The um, mode of work on the document, lack of consultation with member states, as well as the scope of the strategy, do not mean meet what was agreed uh, politically in the conclusions of the Council. The strategy proves a lack of respect to the positions of the member states towards forest policy, which might lead to new regulation and forestry, not including individual national conditionalities in member states. The strategy, the forest strategy, therefore strengthens sustainable, sorry, instead of strengthening a sustainable forest industry, it uh, disrupts the multidimensional character of force, which was clearly stressed at the start of this discussion. The consequence might be disastrous for the economy, for the societies, and not only, but above all for forests. There is a paradoxical situation where meeting goals in terms of biodiversity might bring about its decline. This is why we focus our efforts on expert work, where a definition, definition of strict protection is being worked out. You and Poland have stressed that strict protection cannot boil down to passive protection only. It also needs to include the possibility of active protection. This is key, particularly in the case of continuation of balance to forest economy. For, ex for example, currently strict protection brings with it huge risks due to the start of processes of forest death. 
This is visible in many areas in Poland. I am convinced that a further discussion on the forest strategy and after its publication in the European Union Council, the collaboration between the EU institutions and also at the level of expert, uh, of expert uh, work, uh, Formulations will be identified that will lead to an improvement on the situation and that will be translated into the forest strategy in the future because we all have the joint interest of um, the sustainable development of European and Polish forests, biodiversity, a healthy ecosystem of forests and biodiversity, uh, you know, which is a goal not only at the European but also at a global level. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. I quoted a few elements of the discussion that were uh, mentioned, mentioned in the work on the biodiversity strategy and the forest strategy and uh, you know I um, annex a calendar that might be helpful in the further discussions today. Bardzo dziękujemy panie ministrze, dziękujemy za wystąpienie, dziękujemy za bardzo jasne, konkretne stanowisko, a także działania polskich i Polaków. Szanowni państwo, o zabranie głosu bardzo proszę panią minister eurodeputowaną Annę Zalewską. Bardzo proszę pani minister. Anna Zalewska. Szanowni Państwo, przy zgodnie z protokołem przez prowadzącego i Panów ministrów, witam serdecznie, pewnie jesteście zaskoczeni, skąd i jaka to moja rola, bo um, a, gradu uh, a graduate of uh, environment protection and before I became the Minister of Education I had done something totally uh, different. Uh, I am involved in economic issues. I'm uh, the only poll among seven Europeans that worked on the climate law. At night usually we, we had those discussions so with the uh, European Council and, uh, and uh, it was also thanks to me that the compromise we had had not been uh, got rid of uh, because we had to compromise with the There were some important decisions taken. We agreed that we should have zero emissions, that we have solidarity on the EU level. There were lots of important discussions and I'm really proud, proud that, we, uh, that we achieved our goal. Mimo, że przyjęliśmy z umiarkowanym it was with moderate satisfaction that we, uh, that we welcomed the climate law, but um, every day, every month, we can see the consequences. We need strategy for biodiversity for forests, but we also need to focus on what's ahead of us. State forests and the role of state forests, the role of agriculture, Fit I've analyzed all the documents, which was not easy. They are separate documents, not always interrelated, which is not a good thing. But when it comes to the fragments on forests and on agriculture, this is mostly the LULUCEF regulation on absorption. This regulation Nie zmienia, przepraszam boring, za kolokwializm i młodzieżowe stwierdzenie, uh, hardcore zaczyna się po 26 roku, dlatego hardcore, że become, uh, musimy do 2026 roku We are uzyskać pochłonięcie 310 milionów ton ekwiwalentu węgla. Każdy kraj otrzyma swoją pulę do osiągnięcia. Po 2031 będzie włączone do tego rolnictwo. Uwaga, nie tylko będzie to dotyczyć węgla, wypadku rolnictwa, ale gazy cieplarniane, czyli metan, tlenek, azotu. A zgodnie z tym rozporządzeniem w 2030 roku 
into the reg uh, regulation after 2035 we should have zero emissions for forests and agriculture. Uh, you well know that uh, we've been talking to experts, to, uh, to specialists, and we know that this is impossible to be achieved. And the strategy 30% rules out 30% of forests and wants to protect them with strict protection. One third of these forests should be covered with strict protection. And we can see that we have emission of CO2 and not absorption of CO2 in those forests. And this is the proof of these documents not being interrelated, not having regard of one another. But what the state forests are doing. That's really great, uh, Mr. President. That's just the beginning, you know this. We need to function within the European Parliament, in the European Commission, all possible structures. We need to have majority because we need a proper forest strategy. We need to change the strategy that has been adopted. The Finnish statement uh, uh, was really a strict uh, backstage discussions with uh, MEPs uh, from Finland. It is really important, it is really uh, crucial to count who we need, and I think this is the right place to do this. This is the right place to listen to one another, to learn from one another. I've come here to learn from you, to gain more and more arguments that I could use in the official discussions and backstage discussions. We should be convinced, uh, we should build a communication strategy, what you've been able to achieve, the uh, percentage of participation, the share of participation of Poles in consultation has seemed impossible in the past because usually uh, Germans are mostly involved, but this shows your strength, your possibilities, your capabilities, and this is why I hope that today we will have roles assigned for the next months, for the months to come. On Monday, we have the first reading, which is the presentation, official presentation of the regulation on uh, absorption. And uh, they want uh, this regulation uh, to be adopted, to, to, to go through the entire path in street, so not a uh, big amount of time. And together with Minister Kurtyka, we've been strengthening for us. And uh, I'm doing this my way, uh, Minister is doing this uh, his way, but we speak with one voice, we talk about how we can help uh, uh, through artificial um, um, uh, sequestration, I've created a working group that will implement uh, provisions into all regulations that will make it possible for the technology to develop. There are lots of them in the world of sequestration, CO2 sequestration. It is very likely that this will not happen in the EU and all over the world. The minister has its own team since June. I don't know if you've heard about this. Uh, and we need to speak with one voice. We need to work together to, to create a Polish coalition. We should not talk about closures. Chłonne, a raczej o To wydaje się być kluczowe, bo proszę Państwa, pewnie nie śledziliście, ale odbyła się absolutnie gorąca debata w Parlamencie Europejskim. Tuesday there was heated debate in the European Parliament due to high energy prices, and this is linked most of all to ETS. This is the European system of buying. Węgla. W Europie nie wiem w tym roku, and, uh, nie ma tego, co in można Europe, zarobić we do not na have wind this year. Tak you cannot earn anything on green energy, and you should not believe that green, green energy is cheap. Photovoltaic uh, energy, uh, 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 wind energy, this is not cheap. It is cheaper than coal, but you need to pay for the ETS. And na rynku, co spowodowało, że od kilku lat there needed to be lots of trading, ETS trading. In Europe, to we've had speculation market for a couple of years now, and this is a huge task for us. We've talked about the ministry. We need to change the algorithm of counting the ETS. If the European citizens 
jeszcze wielokrotności cen energii, wielokrotności cen gazu, wielokrotności cen wody i tak dalej, i tak dalej. ETS, jak wiecie, będzie poszerzony. Już tam jest lotnictwo, za moment będzie żegluga morska, samochody osobowe i budownictwo, czyli sam ciężar ambicji między innymi Franza Timmermansa którego nie było podczas debaty na temat szalejących cen energii, pokazuje, że nie ma pomysłów tam, nie ma analiz, nie ma źródeł finansowania, nie ma oprzyrządowania, w jaki sposób my musimy to wspólnie realizować. W związku z tym, tym bardziej, proszę Państwa, że takie są emocje obywateli Unii Europejskiej, którzy boją się o energetyczne. Pamiętajcie, że to energetyczne jest energetyczne. Oni po prostu na to nie pozwolą. To nie może się odbyć Uważam, bardzo ważny moment. Ja uważam, po przeczytaniu tak zwanej to mówimy w Polsce, że ona w tym kształcie jest And I think that the strategy at its current shape e, is worth nothing, wami, but we need to change it. That's our responsibility. We need to do this together with you. We are able to do a lot if we act together. That's why I'm here at your disposal. Thank you. Bardzo dziękujemy Pani Minister, dziękujemy za jak zawsze dynamiczny, energiczny głos. Bardzo życzliwy przy tym i dziękujemy również za to, że czuwa Pani na poziomie brukselskim i za to również bardzo dziękuję. Szanowni Państwo, o zabranie głosu bardzo proszę Panią Minister, Sekretarz Stanu w Ministerstwie Klimatu i Środowiska, Głównego Konserwatora Przyrody, Panią Minister Małgorzata Kubińska. Bardzo proszę Pani Minister. Panowie ministrowie, Dear ministers, państwo parlamentarzyści, MPs, a przede wszystkim szanowni państwo organizatorzy, organizers, to dla was na początku wielkie podziękowania za decyzję o tym, że, żeby zorganizować to spotkanie dzisiaj to wyjść z tym poza granice naszego kraju, bo to jest bardzo ważne, żeby dyskusję nie zamykała się tylko w tym momencie, Poland, not only among foresters, powiedzieć, że spotkamy się we własnym gronie, dyskutujemy That's not uh, that's not uh, the most important yes. thing to do. It is important to talk to others, to convince them to our standpoint. But getting back to the merits, we are all well aware of the fact that nature requires human activities. We all know that humans with their actions can improve the environment or Deplete the environment. We all know that globally we are ahead of huge challenges. Climate change that we have seen, that we have read about, that we have felt are a challenge that we should face at the local and global level. And I think that we all agree on that. Loss, global loss of biodiversity is a fact and is a challenge that we should face. However, if we want to fight, we need to do this logically. We need to base this on some research, on scientific evidence. And this is key for discussion about challenges that are ahead of us because of climate change and about the tools that we should use. Today we are talking about two documents, the strategy for the protection of biodiversity and forest strategy. Uh, they, are, uh, they have uh, lots of common uh, points and uh, there are several aspects that need to be raised, the legal aspect, how far, how deep uh, do the provisions go, how far can, how how deep can they impose on individual member states any actions? 
any actions that would be in line with the treaties and if they go beyond the treaties, can they impose on a member states some actions that might be against their internal uh, legislation? Another issue is something obvious, something environmental. Do the provisions included in the strategy, are they in favor of protection of biodiversity and environment pr protection, or do they just look good on paper? But at the same time, when we think about their consequences, we might reach a conclusion that the effects of implementation of lots of provisions from these documents uh, might be uh, reversed from what we want. Wanted. And it seems to be an important aspect in the discussion that we should take internally and uh, globally. It is us foresters, uh, by education, by profession, by uh, experience, uh, over 100 years of functioning of state forests in Poland, but it also individual experience of all foresters working uh, in the field matters. All our activities, all our decisions, in fact, take into account always the actions taken by the previous generations. Uh, we respect very much what we've uh, um, had uh, in the forest, knowing that the situation we face uh, was brought about by the previous generation. We want to make, we want to preserve the situation. We want to show respect to uh, to the foresters uh, that were there in the past. But we all know that our actions will not have consequences right now. These are the consequences that were, will be left for the future generations. That's why when we discuss documents related to climate change, uh, climate change adaptation. Uh, uh, be it uh, in forests uh, or in uh, uh, cities or in agriculture, because agriculture is an important element uh, of these documents, particularly in the biodiversity strategy. Responsibility should be key, and responsibility leads to a situation where before we write anything we need to think the, think about the consequences. Lots of provisions of the strategy on biodiversity are positive. We all agree with them and the goal, the consequences will be positive. But uh, there are also provisions uh, which raise uh, doubts, raise concern, not because they could affect, uh, well, I don't know, our personal uh, well-being, the things that we are used to. No, that's not the case. Our concerns uh, are very uh, often shown to the society, local, uh, local community. People say, well, you are afraid of change. No, that's not, uh, it's not the case. We feel the responsibility and we know that not everything that looks good on paper will have positive impacts uh, when implemented in practice. Detailed provisions regarding the introduction of strict protection uh, for 10% uh, of uh, forest area in the EU. This requires detailed analysis. We do not have any cohesion between member states co as to what strict protection in individual states is. In Poland, this is a very restrictive approach to uh, environment protection and uh, climate is changing all the time, so the question is, should we really do nothing? Is this the right thing to, to do? I would say no, that's not the right thing to do. Another issue, responsibility, but, and this also uh, is part of uh, biodiversity strategy. It is the food security of member states. The topic of forest, the topic of street protection is one thing, but what's also also crucial is uh, areas that are used uh, by agriculture and the Polish government when preparing its position for the first uh, biodiversity strategy included the conditions on, uh, on uh, land, on the food security. They said we should all care about biodiversity, but on one condition, these actions should not threaten food security of our country. These actions should not 
be detrimental to the nature. They should not uh, lead to a situation where we have uh, forest diebacks uh, in Poland. And the last thing, because I'm talking about things that affect us, all of, uh, well, lots of activities, if they were implemented in uh, the most restrictive sense, they would lead to a situation that uh, the renewable resource uh, wood, it is really natural, it generates no waste, it would need to be limited when it comes to uh, the harvest stage, and this requires a substitute, a replacement. What should we replace the most ecological raw material for construction sector, for architecture? Uh, what, should, what should it be replaced with? I think there is no answer to this question and there is no need to look for a substitute of something that is, that is perfect. But the risk is that if some solutions on paper forced us to do this, well, we would be in danger, in danger. Europe would start to look for substitutes and they would say there is no replacement for, for timber, but they would say probably it should be important from outside the EU. But then globally, the issue of uh, biodiversity protection, the issue of increasing forest cover all over the world, would it be implemented? Yes or no? I think that these are things we should discuss not only during this very conference, but mostly we should uh, confront this concern with all those who perceive uh, the issue of nature bio, of biodiversity protection as something that is uh, black or white. Doing nothing is good, doing anything is bad. No, that's not the case. We should reach out to these people. Uh, we should uh, protect our forest by action also. We should reach out to people who do not understand forest economy. Uh, they do not have to be experts on forests. So we need to explain them why the economy implemented, why the management uh, implemented by the state forest that is based on experience, that is based on, based on difficult experience also. Uh, the difficult experiences of the previous political systems well, if we, if there are any solutions imposed from above, this has, this has detrimental effects on the economy very often. So the intention might be good, but the reality is uh, that uh, forests uh, will uh, be depleted, the economy will be depleted, the society will be in a more difficult situation and food security will would be endangered. And key is to support to, to have the support of experts, uh, of researchers. We all know that we do good things and that we, this is why uh, we say, well, we will not allow a situation where we are said what to do. This is not good either. We need arguments, scientific arguments, arguments that will be understood by those who know nature only from TV screens. For them, any ingeration in forests is bad. We need to explain things to them, but at the same time we need to have expert discussions. There are lots of researchers uh, who say things that are totally different than, than what we are saying today. That is why we need the support of uh, the scientific world that understood um, the situation. We should uh, refrain from emotions. Emotions are difficult, are easy to be triggered, but we should focus on the contents. We should show that our experience is what we can base upon and what other countries can base upon. And uh, we've had lots of experiences uh, in the past, and it is those very experiences that brought us to the conclusions that we are sharing 
uh, with you and with others today. And our perception of these do two documents is a result of our experiences from the past, and we are able to show how to fight for species, how to fight for habitats, how to restore species. We are doing this, and we have been doing this for decades. And I would like to thank all the foresters, uh, uh, the employees of uh, national parks uh, and uh, workers of all the bodies uh, that deal with nature protection. Thank you for this. Thank you, dear Minister. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. As usually, this, as usual, this was very valuable. Thank you for stressing the wisdom of foresters. Thank you very much. Now, Jan Krzysztof Ardanowski, Minister and Head of the Council for Agriculture and Rural Areas, Advisor to uh, President of the Republic of Poland. The floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, thank you very much for your invitation and many thanks to Forest Solidarność and the organizers of this conference. I'm a member of Agricultural Solidarność and I'm a believer not only in uh, that capacity that we need to integrate foresters, uh, farmers and hunters uh, to protect our common interest. We are talking of forests, but their relationship with rural areas and in particular agricultural areas is crucial. Also, there's the wood economy, the uh, water economy, and field economy. Uh, all that is, uh, all these are parts of the same system. Very often only the uh, foresters and uh, hunters can, in their capacity, you know, impact uh, in the right way the economy of the forest. Forest also impacts uh, agriculture. There's a direct relationship and the discussion of these documents, um, you know, it's focused uh, on, uh, as it has been mentioned, and these uh, documents were not really consulted with anyone while it, their impact is crucial and very, very significant. I agree with my four speaker, Minister. Poland, although it does not have the best quality uh, of uh, earths, this is why parts of the earths is uh, dedicated to forests, and yet Poland can produce much more food than, uh, you know, for the needs of its own society, and that's the basis of uh, ethical agriculture, that is, the countries that have natural conditions useful for the production of food, that they do it because there are areas of the world where due to climate um, issues, uh, conditionalities, uh, quality of earths, uh, food cannot be produced. The usefulness of such production is also strengthened by the fact that the um, population the human population is growing and hunger migration to the rich north and the European countries is going to increase and we already are seeing the start of those huge migration moves. This is why I am convinced that we need to integrate the agriculture, forestry in all kinds of endeavors taken up, which are so important from the point of view of environmental protection. We are the guardians of uh, nature, uh, like uh, our foresters, and, you know, accusing them of uh, any inappropriate action is uh, simply not right. At the same time, we need to protect our motherland and integrating these uh, groups. For me, as a person, always having uh, taken care of the environment, and I hope for my colleagues from other groups that I'm mentioning, 
znajdujące się w dokumentach dotyczących We will see this as a joint goal in terms of modifying the provisions in biodiversity and forest strategy. I would like today's conference to be clear on the fact that not only foresters will fight for the issues that are the topic of today's conference, but also that the integration of different groups, including farmers, is absolutely necessary. Thank you very much for having organized this conference and I wish you all the best. Bardzo dziękujemy, Panie Ministrze, za Thank you very much, uh, dear Minister, for a comprehensive outlook on the issue. Thank you. We as foresters work in the countryside, after all, in rural areas. Uh, that's our uh, place of operation. Let's summarize this initial part of the conference. So the voice goes to Józef Kubica, Acting Director General of State Forests. Thank you very much for your patronage support and co-organizing today's conference. The floor is yours. Dear ministers, dear members of parliament, dear member of European parliament, dear delegates, German, Estonian delegates, magnificencies, professors, friends wearing green uniforms. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the last to go and we have limited time. So at this point I would like to thank you all for being here. Thank you for accepting the invitation and the call of the president who um, and I was sitting there humbly, but he is the great organizer of this conference, one in a series I hope that will take place in Poland because this is very important as a topic not only for foresters but for modern ecology, for the environment of Europe and of the entire globe. Ladies and gentlemen, I want, I do not want to uh, run over our time restrictions because we have certain limits and since we have many distinguished speakers ahead of us who are going to take floor on very important issues, let me at this point thank you very simply for being with us and uh, thank you that, uh, for the fact that we can continue. Now it's time for the press briefing. Once again, Again, uh, thank you from my heart for being here. Bardzo, bardzo many, many thanks. Bardzo, bardzo dziękujemy, panie dyrektorze. Thank you very much, dear director. Thank you for your kind words and many thanks to those who took the floor in this first part of today's conference. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now have a break until noon, until 12 o'clock. This is slightly different from the agenda of today's conference, but let's have now a quarter um, of an hour of a coffee break. Um, um, Ms. Mangari and Przemek, please stay with us. We'll see if we are in need of you for the briefing, press briefing part. Let's uh, reconvene at noon.
Raz, raz, raz. No jeszcze czekamy na uruchomienie. Raz, dobrze. Czekamy na uruchomienie też streamingu. Poszło. Dzień dobry, raz jeszcze witamy w czasie briefingu prasowego. Szanowni Państwo, jest z nami pan minister Michał Kurtyka, pan minister Edward Ciarka, pan minister Paweł Sałek. Jest również przewodniczący Związku Zawodowego Komisji, kolega Zbigniew Kuszlewicz. Jest również pani Sylwia Melegari, bardzo prosimy, sekretarz generalny Europejskiej Federacji Przemysłu Tartacznego. I również pan Gregor Schimbeck, przewodniczący niemieckiej Rady Leśnictwa. Szanowni Państwo, bardzo proszę Państwo, is with us. Ladies and gentlemen, must have a brief comment, two minutes long, please, in uh, the context of this conference, presenting your positions, dear minister. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to express my great satisfaction with the fact that we can meet in this international context at a meeting initiated by Solidarność of the uh, State Forests. Many thanks for Mr. Kuszlewicz for having an opportunity to talk to our colleagues from Estonia, from Germany and uh, international organizations for the very important issue of the environmental protection and biodiversity in Europe based on the proposed documents by the EC in terms of biodiversity and forest strategy. I think there is no need to remind anyone that Poland is one of those states that are very strong in environmental protection. We have beautiful traditions in that respect uh, 100 years long because uh, the first Polish uh, natural parks started in 1921 exactly. We are talking about the first provisions concerning natural conservation and the work for the benefit of Polish biodiversity and Polish forests. And as a result, we have 60,000 um, species, 1,800 protected species. We have 23 national parks, over 1.5 thousand natural reserves, and over 19.5 percent of our surface is under Natura 2000 which is above the European uh, average. We could talk on and on about these numbers. And the reason we are here in Warsaw today is to discuss uh, the protection of this environment in the future, how to arrive at a situation where we can wisely combine the environmental protection with climate change as well, with the support on the part of mankind protecting ecosystems uh, from impoverishing their wealth, how we as foresters and citizens can work for expanding biodiversity in order to promote afforestation in Poland and at the same time keep up the very important functions of forests in terms of environmental protection and uh, uh, an economy, society and education areas. These are the issues under discussion today. My big thank you for the president, for the organizers, and I'm very happy that this is under the honorary patronage of the President of the Republic of Poland, Andrzej Duda, because the challenge before us is the huge challenge of specifying the provisions presented in such a spirit that they contribute to increase biodiversity in the EU instead of its impoverishing. Thank you very much, Minister. Now, Mr. Paweł Sałek, Minister, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very important initiative. A very important discussion is ongoing and is going to continue on two documents published in May last year by the European Commission. They directly deal deal with environmental protection in Poland, the creation of uh, environmental protection and forestry. The Polish forest economy model worked out through ecological engineering 
ponad 100 lat, Pomniejszanie emisji, ale z drugiej strony reducing emissions, but on the other hand, importantly, we need to care about the environment, Polish forests, European forests, that is, those that capture CO2. And this conference is, among others, focused on how to manage forests so that sequestration, absorption issues are you know, provided by forests, among others. There's a number of provisions in EU documents. Uh, I mean the biodiversity strategy and the forest strategy. From the point of view of the Polish forest management and European forest management, these are um, concerning. I mean that uh, you know a number of years of experience of foresters might be completely managed, changed, disrupted as a result of the application of these provisions. They uh, might bring into question the role of the forests as played as of today. Among others, and particularly I mean one of the requirements that is the protection of 10% of the surface of the the territory of the country in strict way, as well as the protection of old growth forests, as well as the so-called primary forest, which is not very well defined, as well as closer uh, forests, forests closer to natural. These are issues that uh, cause a very vivid discussion and the uh, forestry uh, uh, circle. We try to be an active member of the discussions at the European level, at the level of the European Parliament and the European Commission, so that what is the heritage of the European um, forestry that is the multifunctionality as mentioned by my four speakers, so that this heritage can be protected and kept because that's a guarantee for the forests to sequestrate CO2. This is what we're talking about today. This is what we are fighting for, and I hope that with the support of our European partners, other member states that have similar experience, we can manage to keep with that multi-functional character of Dziękujemy, European forests. Bardzo, panie ministrze, o Thank you very much, Minister. Sylvia Melegari will take the floor of the European Federation of Sawmill Industry. She will talk in English. Whoever is willing to use the interpretation, please use the headphones, headsets. Thank you. Good morning and thank you very much for this invitation. Um, I represent uh, not only the European organization of the sawmill industry, but I'm here today on behalf also of the European Confederation of the Woodworking Industry. We have been following, following closely the discussion about uh, the forest strategy and uh, the entire woodworking value chain also has concern for biodiversity, forest protection, 
but uh, using a wood, uh, it's part of the sustainable management of forests and also contribute uh, to forest protection. We shall not uh, um, forget that uh, selling wood uh, for economic purposes uh, help the forest owner to reinvest in their own forest uh, and uh, to the sustainable forest management. The new strategy lacks in uh, um, taking in consideration what are the concerns of the industry. It proposes a one-size-fits-all approach, while forests are very different in Europe and also the utilization of the resources are very different in Europe. Another point that the strategy doesn't touch is the sustainable wood mobilization. It is essential for the wood industry to have enough raw material for continue to produce. The, uh, the sawmill industry, but also the woodworking industry in Europe, are a micro, small enterprise. Basically, they are family business. And there is no impact assessment of what uh, all the new measures that the Commission is putting forward will mean uh, from a wood availability point of view. How much wood will be available for us for continuing to operate? When a sawmill industry or a wood industry closes down, in that region you have a lack of employment, a lack of um, employment in rural area. So this is, a, this is for us obviously a concern. We want to be a part of the debate, we want to contribute to the discussion on the forestry strategy and on the biodiversity strategy, and we would like to be listened by the, by the institution. Thank you. Dziękuję bardzo pani Sylwio. Dzięk Thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank you, Proszę Sylvia Melegori. Now the floor goes to Georg Schlieber, head of the German Forest Council. Pana Bogdana Witkowskiego. Bardzo proszę panowie. Ja, verehrte Minister und Abgeordnete, meine Damen und Herren, ich bedanke mich für die Einladung nach hier. Also, szanowni panowie ministrowie, szanowni pan Dear ministers, members of the parliament, well, uh, thank you for the invitation. It is a great day for uh, the European forestry. I'm a representative of the German forestry and from what I've heard before the meeting and from what I've heard during the today's meeting, I can say that the Polish and the German forestry speak with one voice. That is why I think that there will be a strong signal coming to Brussels. Jeżeli chodzi o fachowców, when it comes to experts on forestry and forest management, they speak with one voice. I to byłoby naprawdę e, czymś niedobrym, and it would be ten, a pity if this voice, nie, nie this knowledge, e, were not e, pod uwagę, taken into account in Europe. I will for the 19th of January 2022 to the whole European forest and forest Berlin to Berlin. I would like to invite uh, for the 19th January 2022, I would like to invite all the experts on uh, forest and forest management to Berlin. The European bureaucracy the notwendigen Nachdruck to verleihen. Dass wir eine Forststrategie strategy bekommen, die dem europäischen Wald und den Menschen dient. In order to emphasize and show to, to, to the European legislator that we need strategy that will be profitable for forests. Um die Interessen des polnischen und des europäischen Waldes nachdrücklich zu vertreten. And I would be really uh, glad to have with me representatives, experts from Polish forests to stand next to me in the first row to present our uh, claims in Europe. We need to win because it's important for our forestry and for our people. Thank you. Bardzo dziękujemy panu Thank przewodniczącemu you, o zabranie głosu. And Bardzo proszę przewodniczącego.
Zbigniewa Kuślewicz. Prezydent Zbigniew Kuślewicz. Szanowni Państwo, Ladies and gentlemen, konferencja, która się odbywa, the conference uh, today has been organized by the independent uh, trade union Solidarity. We've taken the efforts to host this debate because we think that this topic is not discussed widely enough in our media. It is not conveyed to the society. I hope that today the society will learn about the topic. Uh, we will have some statements published uh, that uh, hopefully will reach uh, the Polish society and will familiarize the society with the risks coming from the strategy for biodiversity and forest strategy. The outcome of today's conference, I hope, will be as follows. Well, you've all heard that lots of countries have a similar opinion to us, Poles. So I hope that we will speak with one voice, that we will work together, and together we will question any provisions that are not in line with our feeling of security, most importantly, that is linked to state forests and forest economy, as this will impact on, uh, as this will have impact on the Polish society. So I hope that the outcome will be joint activities that will lead to changes. Thank you. Thank you, President Kuszlewicz, and now a voiceover to Director um, of State Forest Jarosław Kubica. Józef Kubica. Ladies and gentlemen, the EU is a union of sovereign states. We cannot have a situation where a group uh, that represents some pseudo-scientific views propagates things that cannot be accepted uh, by the rest. Uh, they are not, uh, uh, they cannot be accepted uh, by the rest of the states. Uh, to put it in simple terms, uh, well, we cannot have hairdressers taking care of forests. And I would like to share the view of my uh, colleague from Germany. We need to have discussion with all the member states, all the organizations. We cannot have a situation where there are some surveys uh, that no one takes into account and so on and so forth. The situation uh, cannot be accepted as it is today. Uh, we do not agree, as, uh, as Polish foresters, uh, I think also foresters from other states, do not agree on this. This is an aberration. We cannot eliminate uh, one class of uh, trees uh, in uh, the stands uh, to, just, uh, to just die. This is, uh, this is something that cannot be accepted. We are against it. This is a huge, huge misunderstanding. And I think that uh, actions such as today's conference uh, is a, a turning point, uh, a, a, a driver for actions in other states as well. We need solidarity. As the president said, we've got huge solidarity and we need to use this solidarity to protect forests, to pr protect environment, to protect nature in the right way. We uh, cannot succumb to views of several people who are not related to, to nature in any way. We know how to protect nature. Nature. We show it to the entire Europe. We cannot uh, have a situation where science, where research that's been uh, working on the protection of forests uh, and nature uh, for a hundred of years goes for nothing. A scientist from Poland, from Switzerland, from other states. This cannot be simply uh, got rid of. I hope that forestry will protect itself and will be truly ecological. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you for being with us today. Goodbye.
Raz, 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 dwa, raz, dwa, raz, dwa. Zapraszamy do zajmowania miejsc. Bardzo Państwa prosimy. Uprzejmie prosimy o zajmowanie miejsc. Raz, dwa. Raz, dwa, raz, dwa. Coś cicho jest. Pani Franciszka. Już, a mamy, będzie ta, ta, ta szkółka. Jeszcze, jeszcze nie dojechał.
we are back to the conference after the break. Szanowni Państwo, zaczynamy po poprzed... We are back after the break. Break, let's wait for uh, the streaming to be activated. Okay, so official welcome after the break uh, together with our online viewers. Uh, and now Fran uh, Franciska Schier from the Tienen Institute of International Forestry and Forest Economics from Germany. Franziska is the co-author of a report that was published in November 2019 on the effects of the implementation of the Biodiversity Strategy 2030. Franziska will talk about EU Biodiversity Strategy 2030 potential relocation effects in forestry and forest product markets. And please, 20 minutes. Okay. So, do you hear me well? Yes. Great. So, originally I would like to say good morning, but that's over now. I will start with good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me on behalf of my colleagues to this event. My name is Franziska Schier, and um, it's a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to present you a study we conducted last year at the Tune Institute of International Forestry and Forest Economics. The focus of this study is um, the analysis of possible leakage effects in the global forest sector from the implementation of the EU Biodiversity Strategy 2030. So, well, um, to introduce the study framework, I'd like to shortly summarize the main objectives from our point of view um, of the strategy. So, the first aspect uh, is to legally protect a minimum of 30% of the EU's land area and 30% of the EU's sea area. The second aspect is to strictly protect, we heard that during the, the morning several times, to strictly protect a third of the EU's protected areas, including all remaining, all remaining primary and old growth forests. Um, unfortunately, a concise decision what old growth forests actually are is missing. And the third one refers to the effective management of all protected areas. Well, we expect that a realization of these targets would lead to a decrease in roundwood supply from the European forests and a relocation of roundwood production to other countries. In other words, we expect a leakage effect. What is leakage? As we perceive it, leakage falls in the rating of a spillover. And a spillover can be any form of collateral um, effect that takes place across uh, established boundaries. Leakage is a more specific case, and um, it is a type of spillover in the sense that an environmental policy directly affects or counteracts its original aims and thus reduce the overall benefit of the intervention. Um, so leakage has three key elements. Uh, the impact occurred as a causal effect of an environmental policy intervention the variable affected is the uh, target vari variable of this intervention, and leakage has a negative effect on the target variable. In the context of the EU Biodiversity Strategy 2030, um, the major objective would be to protect the biodiversity inside the EU. Um, Consequently, the loss of biodiversity outside the EU would be a classical, classical uh, case of leakage. Well, after having said this, um, I come to the critical question we ask ourselves, namely if the implementation of the EU biodiversity strategy would lead to a decrease in biodiversity outside the EU. Well, and we answered this question in three steps. We first estimate the potential roundwood production due to the implementation of the strategy on behalf of the example Germany. We 
uh, then assess the impact on production and trade of food and wood-based products in the EU and the rest of the world. And finally, we evaluated the leakage effect in non-EU countries using an indicator-based approach. So, we start with um, the first topic. Um, and uh, the answer, how could the roundwood production change in Germany after uh, the implementation of measures derived from the strategy? To calculate this change, my colleagues um, introduced and combined th three measures. First, um, we set aside of 10% of the forest area, plus the non-utilization of old growth forests. In the case of Germany, old growth forests uh, were defined as forest stands older than the usual rotation lengths, and expand the share of protected areas under the Habitat Directive to 30%. In total, and according to uh, this scenario, you can see in the second column of the table that about half of these German forests would be somehow protected under this scenario. Uh, the next column on the right-hand side uh, show that the largest reduction in roundwood supply would be realized in the compartment of old growth forests, namely a minus of 18 uh, million cubic meter. Reduction from set-aside forest also would sum up to another 6 million cubic meters, whereas the reduction from expanding protected areas under the Habitat Directive would be rather marginal. However, in sum, the colleagues calculated a total roundwood production supply after the implementation of the described measures in Germany of around about 31% in 2020. We took this ratio, namely this 31%, and transfer it to the roundwood production of all EU, EU, EU member states. The result would be, and you'll see that on the very uh, right of this table, guess, um, a total reduction of EU roundwood supply of nearly 150 million cubic meters in 2020. Well. And with this, we come to the second question. How does roundwood production change in non-EU countries under the implementation of the EU biodiversity strategy measures? And with this, we're also entering my field of expertise. Now my work is starting. Um, well, let's have a look. The analysis, oh, I want to go back. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm totally fine, thank you. <laughs> Well, the analysis is based on scenario simulations we carried out with the global forest product model. What we did here was, in very simple terms, to introduce the limited roundwood uh, supply under the biodiversity um, scenario and introduce that as an upper bound on possible roundwood production for each of the member states uh, for a period from 2020 to 2050. By restricting the EU roundwood supply, we then can assess the impact on production and trade for EU and non-EU countries. So, now, you see the sum of roundwood production in the EU countries. The historical production up to 2012 is shown in grey. From 2012 onwards, the development of the reference scenario, the blue line, a scenario without any restrictions, um, shows a further increase in roundwood production. In orange, we have the production under the exogenous restriction of the biodiversity scenario. By 2050, we see a difference in production between the reference and the biodiversity scenario of around about 22%, which would correspond to a production for a shortfall of 244 million cubic meters. Our global analysis shows that approximately 73% of this shortfall would be compensated by countries other than the EU with increasing roundwood production. The remaining 27% would no longer be produced, but compensated with decreasing consumption of woody products. Well, we will now have a look what countries are affected. Here, um, by this relocation, and relocation is simply the difference between the production um, in the reference and the biodiversity scenario. 
You see on the right the level of the EU production. On the left, you see the countries to which the production is shifting in our simulations, namely USA, Russia, and Canada, which compensate the shortfall in coniferous roundwood production, followed by Brazil, Malaysia, Ukraine, Turkey, India, Chile, and Belarus, whereas um, Ukraine and Belarus above all compensate for restrictions in the energy, or the fuel wood production. Um, on this slide, left-hand sided, we see how the production of wood-based products is affected and relocated. On the right, we have the aggregated EU production of sawn wood, vineyard, plywood, and wood-based panels under the reference and the biodiversity scenario. The drop of production in 2050 would roughly equal 120 million cubic meters. On the left, you see again those countries to which the production, or countries which increase their production volumes under the biodiversity scenario. Again, we have here USA and Canada, but uh, also Malaysia and Chile, and Norway as a non-EU member state. Okay, the graph on the right shows the relocation in the paper sector. You see that the inner European production volumes are considerably, considerably less affected compared uh, to the woodworking sector. However, um, among the countries that are increasing their paper production or paper and paper board production are again USA, Indonesia and India, but also the UK as a non-EU member state. Well, that have been the results from the um, wood products markets modeling, and now we will finally turn to the evaluation of relocation or leakage effects in non-EU countries. Um, the evaluation is based on a series of indicators to assess the country's specific risks due to occurring leakage. Um, I cannot go so much into detail here. Um, I switch to the examples to make it more um, visible for you. Uh, here we see, uh, I said it's an indicator-based approach, and we have here an indicator as an example. Uh, the indicator represents sustainable forest management in terms of forest area under certification and forest area under management plans. We see that the EU is, or we see the EU in dark blue uh, in the upper part of this graph. What we can state is that there are better countries in terms of forest management, but also a number of worse ones. Uh, if we weight this indicator with the amount of timber that would come from these countries under increasing timber production, we note that especially um, the forests of the US and Russia are classified as endangered. So, here we have the second indicator, the share of intact forest landscape in total forest area. We notice that the EU is hardly appearing here with a column, which is due to the fact uh, that there are hardly any primary forests left, except in Poland, maybe. I learned that today uh, in the morning, <laughs> to, uh, to other countries. Um, so, if we write this indicator with the production of wood, that come from these countries, we, we see among the top countries, USA and Russia, um, which would uh, increase their roundwood production due to, to the implementation of the EU biodiversity strategy in Europe. And again, these forests are classified as endangered. Well, from um, this risk assessment, that my colleagues carried out. From this risk assessment, we conclude that positive biodiversity effects in the EU are very likely to be counteracted by negative effects outside the EU. So negative effects on biodiversity we can observe in non-EU countries. Um, well, here, I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing that I'm really good in time, so I have enough, <laughs> enough time to, to end this presentation um, by answering the key questions we ask ourselves. Namely, um, 
if or does the implementation of the EU biodiversity strategy T would result in a relocation of roundwood production? And we would say yes, 73% of the overall roundwood production decrease in the EU is supposed to be compensated by an increased production in non-EU countries. We also found that 27% uh, would not be produced anymore, anywhere, but simply uh, would no longer be consumed, not in the EU, not in the world. So we would have here somehow a substitution of wood-based product by other, most likely, less sustainable products. Um, the second part of the question was uh, if the implementation of this strategy would lead to a decline of biodiversity in non-EU countries. And we would say, again, yes, at a global scale, it is expected that positive biodiversity effects in the EU, if we can reach them with the strategy, that's another question, but that positive biodiversity effects in the EU due to additional protection measures are counteracted by negative effects in non-EU countries, especially in countries which maybe have a less established, less restrictive law for forest protection and so on in force. Well, I'd like to mention that we published the study I was now talking about as a tune working paper freely available at the World Wide Web. Uh, currently, we are updating this analysis and um, we are refining the um, forest scenarios. Um, now we are using two alternative ones, one intensive and one extensive one, and we hope to publish this work also, maybe at the end of the year. I'm looking forward. Well, that it is, and uh, with this I would like to thank you very much, also on behalf of my colleagues, uh, for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Francisca Scheer of the Tunin Institute uh, for this speech, for the presentation, and uh, you know, many thanks to the whole team also who worked on the issue under Matthias Dieter, head of the Institute. Many thanks for this first uh, report of this kind, such a um, wide one, uh, in terms of biodiversity 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, let us move on to the next point on the agenda. And um, Konrad Tomaszewski, PhD, will talk to you about social and economic results of the possible implementation of the European uh, strategy of on biodiversity 2030 in Poland. The floor is yours. Chciałbym bardzo serdecznie powitać plenotitula wszystkich tutaj. A warm welcome to all those present in this hall. I mean all the participants of this significant event, including the minister, the advisor to the president of the Republic of Poland and the acting director general of State Forests Enterprise, and including a member of the European Parliament, Zaleska. I would like to pick up on the assessment of impact in socio-economic terms of implementation of the strategy, but in Polish conditions. By way of introduction, but before I move to the introduction, let me perhaps explain why I reacted so vividly to the statement concerning the territory of Poland. Welcome, Minister Szarka is here present too. I'm very happy 
that I personally am happy that our German colleagues see Poland as a country rich in primary forests. Let me just remind you that the strategy carries the original definition of primary uh, forests for the needs prepared, definition prepared for the needs of Europe. The, it's defined as uh, forests created by man, but they are similar, but being similar to uh, primary forests. So let's assume that they are primary, in fact, for the needs of the strategy 2030. That's what I wanted to say by way of commentary referring to that. Now, I am going to assess the impact, uh, social and economic wise, of implementation of this strategy. But before I move to that, I need to tell you that in the Polish conditions, it is impossible to talk about these impacts without mentioning the legal and organizational form of the state forests states, and this is a unique structure, absolutely unique. And yet, it is based on German experience. It is an enterprise, but um, a very particular one. Namely, alongside economic activity, alongside the production of market produce, it produces a whole range of non-market produce in support of public administration, which is of a grave economic consequences, of great consequences, uh, of economic and uh, social. Uh, kind in terms of the implementation of the strategy that we are discussing. So alongside uh, timber, um, raw material, this enterprise produces a whole array of products uh, on behalf of uh, the public administration. The legal um, form and organizational form of state uh, forests, um, I, you know, there have been uh, many attempts at uh, modifying this form. There is a whole range of companies around it, you know, suggestions of very bad solutions. Uh, among others, uh, Prime Minister Balcerowicz uh, came up with this concept uh, that I dislike very much. And I fought it fiercely. In terms of organization, by way of this introduction, in the role of the state forests in supporting public administration, I am not going to uh, bore you with a whole list of uh, these activities that I mean. Let me just tell you that there are around 50 different ways to support the public administration by state forests, both in decision making and uh, fulfilling, you know, all kinds of public administration uh, um, daily routine uh, operations. And I mean the support by forest, uh, state forests to the public administration because, you know, every operator has to pay taxes, etc. That is normal. Now there is a lot of talk about corporate social responsibility, including for the environment, and I mean beyond standard support of the public administration. That being said, let me talk to you about the methodology of the study that has been prepared for the on the request of the Secretariat. National Secretariat of Forest Resources, uh, Environmental Protection, and Forestry of the Trade Union Organization Solidarność. First, following state forests, we adopted the following uh, methodology. We adopted a most positive scenario. 2.7 million hectares are going to be excluded, laid off um, in the most positive uh, possible scenario. It is the state forests that will carry the burden uh, of possible implementing the biodiversity strategy in uh, uh, practice. So we adopted this scenario of 2.7 million hectares. 
Then what we did is use very good reporting data of state forests going back to 96, 1996, and based on that, uh, that data, we um, prepared a number of trend lines. These trend lines allow for an estimate financial result of state forests in 2024. That is our assumed year of possible implementation of the strategy. In simple terms, we applied the simplest way to go about the calculations. I will move to a commentary of the results of the simulation that we carried out in a minute in the context to that is simulation in the context of possible implementation of the strategy for biodiversity 2030. But before that, let me talk to you about something else. There's going to be a big loss effect in terms of results impact on the forest, state forests and the whole Polish reality. Like I said, this particular entity, this enterprise carries out a market activity in terms of producing wood, raw material, timber, but also it carries out activities in terms of non market market activity in the form of non-productive functions of the forest. Within the European Union legal framework, there is the regulation on national accounting. I do not encourage you to look into it because it's 700 page long. Well, I devoted three months of my life to study it. In any case, the conclusion of the regulation is that it is fully possible and quite desirable to estimate the uh, market value of the non-productive function of forests. The authors of the um, act uh, apply the rule of discounting flows of revenue in uh, different uh, areas. State forests have the method of so-called a loss character, non-loss character. I will tell you what it is in a minute. In any case, there is the possibility of uh, economic calculation of such production, although it's not market-like. So we're talking about the use of the forest fund. Currently, there is uh, the supreme uh, control uh, inspection chamber, um, inspection control being carried out in the forest. And this is a very particular kind of carrying out activity in the state forests. If we look uh, into the details of the uh, character of what the forest fund is, then we will conclude that the expenditure of resources that is uh, uh, targeted subsidies, oh, these are so-called uh, say uh, targeted subsidies, but uh, they are not really um, uh, legally by law uh, targeted subsidies, but they're similar to them in form. I allowed myself to estimate the level of global production linked to the targeted earmarking of resources of the Forest Fund in 2020, and it stands at around 200 to 120. 50 million slotties. At the level of the Directorate General, there is a calculation of financial results which is then laid off in the form of the Forest Fund, which is a result of the financial uh, results uh, at the end of the activities of the Forest Fund, which is a result of the support of the public resources, and that stands at 200-250 million slotties. But also there is the non market production, which is the basis for the level of um, staff that we have at the uh, State Forest, because uh, a few, of, uh, few uh, people know that on uh, a daily support to the public administration and other activities, uh, we are very um, active, and that production should also be calculated based on costs, 
carried by various um, pro, um, professional positions because that is how production is estimated, calculated in government and local government entities. I already mentioned that 220 million is the global produce non-market generated by state forests due to uh, the targeted uh, spending on the forest fund. In this study, with other experts, we evaluated also the uh, in contribution of seed force in uh, GDP, both uh, net and gross. Well, if we were to assume that implementation will take place, of the strategy, then in 2024, the contribution of state forests in the formation of GDP would stand at 9 billion 400 million plus zlotys. If that was divided by the net production, domestic product, through the employment in the state forests, then the conclusion would be that the state forests would be above, above the average in terms of contribution to GDP. So let's stop discussing the overemployment in the state forests because we really contribute much more than many business operators in the market. But after the implementation of the strategy, our contribution would be symbolic. It would stand at 1.5 billion zlatis. Now let us move to the economic and social impacts flowing from the possible implementation of the strategy. Above all, ladies and gentlemen, in 2024, the net result of the state forests would stand at negative 834,000 slotties. Let's forget about the forest fund because, I, like I said, it is um, the fund that you know uh, compounds the accumulated financial results of the activity of state forests. So it would cease existing. So this is you know, not about uh, political declaration anymore. This is very hard calculation. Negative 834,000 zlotys, or rather million zlotys, sorry. So uh, reduction of production by 15 million cubic meters. This is in line with what our German colleagues uh, assessed. Average number of uh, operators, business operators that would cease operating would stand at around 2.5 thousand. Also, there would be a radical drop in the stream of uh, burning timber. There would be need for a change in legal and organizational uh, form of state forests, which is absolutely unique. There is no second organization that would be dealing for so many years and so effectively with multi-dimensional sustainable uh, forest economy. Is there an alternative approach? Well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, there is. It has been tested in a pilot program on the example of forest coal enterprises, an alternative path for keeping up the biodiversity with the upkeep of productive and uh, beyond productive functions of forests would be uh, alluding to the forest coal enterprises, among others. 
Such an alternative is definitely not the 2030 strategy. I do realize, of course, that we are talking of the social and economic impacts before talking about the environmental impacts. And I do know that the Secretariat had prepared a very professional study of those impacts as well, proving that these impacts, like the minister said, are beautiful on paper, but in practice they would end in what, you, what usually you know, disactivating forest areas ends in. Thank you very much for your attention. Bardzo dziękujemy. Bardzo dziękujemy Pani Dyrektorze za pełne troski, spojrzenie w przyszłość a ja do referatu zapraszam And I would like to invite two professors to the stage, Professor Tomasz Zawiły-Niedźwiecki, the president of the Forest Science and uh, Wood Technology Committee at the um, Academy of Science, Polish Academy of Science, and Professor Jarosław Kocha, Socha, who uh, have jointly written the report. Professor Tomasz Zawiła Niedźwiecki, 20 minutes for you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This slide is supposed to show you, to, to remind you of the situation and uh, the biggest threats uh, ahead of forests, the, the biggest threats for the uh, current uh, time drought and changing climate conditions. Uh, we all know that at the same time, the growing season has uh, extended. So what strategies can we apply? Or what strategies do trees apply to, to survive despite the drought, despite the severe conditions? As you can see uh, on the left hand side, uh, the slide uh, was pre prepared by uh, Professor Jarosław Socha. They should extend the system of roots and minimize uh, the part that is uh, above the ground. But uh, due to the fact that that we've had, we have uh, extended growing season, lots of uh, nitrogen compounds. So we have the situation that can be seen on the right hand side, minimization of the roofs, uh, of the roots and increase in biomass. If we compare the situation now to the situation we had 50 years ago, we have an increase of uh, one or even two uh, uh, bionic classes than it used to be a couple of years ago. So the trees are no longer uh, stable, which means that they are subject, uh, they die. Um, stunts uh, collapse, uh, the uh, stunts uh, die quicker, there is loss of habitats, loss of uh, biodiversity and CO2 emissions instead of CO2 um, sequestration that we would ex uh, expect. What's, uh, what's the solution? Multifunctional, sustainable forest manage management is the solution. It would lead to a situation where stunts uh, would uh, be in a better position to survive uh, and to provide uh, uh, the economy with uh, the raw materials that is necessary for the economy. Uh, this uh, picture uh, was prepared by Mr. Javitsky, who is present in this room, and this is an observation that was initiated uh, in the 1930s. Professor Brzeziecki prepared this uh, slide. In the strict uh, reserve of the Białowieża National Park, what we can observe is uh, 
the succession, the direction of uh, the uh, species composition and structure. And we've got to do with simplifying the structure and species composition of stunts. And instead of multi-species uh, uh, um, stunts with diverse structure, after 90 years, we've got uh, one species stunts with a very simple structure. And the simplifying the structure is not the worst thing that can happen. The worst thing is uh, the dying of trees that uh, are the carriers of biodiversity and who wins trees which are not uh, as good in the role of carriers of biodiversity so this natural succession leads and strict protection leads to a situation in many cases that we have observed in the strict uh, reserve uh, in the Białowieża National Park is the loss of diversity. And this is a huge, huge threat ahead of us uh, in terms of uh, this uh, irresponsible strategy of biodiversity that we can see now. Professor Brzeziecki, in his expertise uh, from uh, 2021, emphasizes that the introduction of a medium range, uh, so 10% uh, share of strict protection results in a situation that 40% of forests are excluded from production in Poland. This land will be under strict protection. And in the Anthropocene, this is where we live now, strict protection can lead to a situation where the consequences are really negative because lots of stands, lots of uh, forests, because we are talking about forests, cannot self-regulate and uh, cannot uh, survive and maintain biodiversity independently. So strict protection is important, but in uh, na national parks, but it uh, has lots of threats as well. And one of such threats is the loss of fundamental uh, species, simplifying the structure of forests and loss of biodiversity. And this uh, multifunctional model of uh, forest management is the model that can prevent all those negative uh, factors. Unfortunately, the European Commission has ignored this so far, and I've taken part in consultations regarding the strategy on biodiversity many, many times, and I need to tell you that there was no feedback after our uh, speeches, after our statements. Uh, we were thanked uh, for giving voice, uh, putting a voice into the discussion, but uh, there was no in-depth discussion following our statements and our statements uh, are is be our statement uh, the statement uh, of uh, the academy uh, is based on the outcomes of uh, scientific research this is not an emotional approach that would be irresponsible, that, that would be presented by someone who is not fond of nature. No, it is based on science. Uh, further uh, outcomes uh, from the work of Mr. Brzezi Brzeziecki. Uh, environmental or climate change uh, requires uh, enormous efforts to maintain the fundamental species uh, that are um, crucial for biodiversity. City. Activities of humankind make it possible uh, for, uh, for biodiversity to be stable and for forests to have a diverse structure. Human activities are necessary to preserve uh, rare species, endangered species, uh, because you, um, um, field maple, or black toplar will not survive without uh, the activities of humans. Also, humans' activities are, are crucial as uh, when it comes to 
mitigation and adaptation to climate change. That's why uh, we are ahead of a challenge posed by the current uh, circumstances. We need to have uh, sequestration of CO2, CO2 storage uh, in forests. Uh, we've got uh, the heritage from the previous decades uh, that we need to take account of right now. Uh, now, a couple of words on the economic and the social consequences. This slide is for our guests uh, from abroad and from outside uh, the forest. Uh, a sector, but I think uh, it is interesting. Uh, the general, the overall forest area in Poland is 9.3 million hectares. Uh, volume is uh, 20, 290 cubic meters per hectare. The uh, yearly increment is uh, more or less 9 cubic meters per hectare per year. 81% uh, of uh, forests are owned by the state treasury and uh, it is managed by uh, the uh, state uh, forest holding. The average age of stands, this is 40, this is 64 years. Uh, uh, the average mass of CO2 absorbed annually by forests is less than 40 million tons. 40% uh, of state forests belong to uh, the uh, nature 2000 uh, area. We've got one. 1,300 nature reserves and uh, they are located in state forests. State forests uh, give 25,500 jobs. The annual income, it is approximately 9 billion PLN annual taxes. Uh, so funds that go to the state budget, this is approximately 3 billion PLN. And subcontractors, uh, forest services, uh, foresters, konsumują, znaczy, czy żyją z tego, że lasy państwowe they live off 3 billion uh, PLN that is paid by state forests. State forests spend approximately 1 billion PLN for environment protection. Uh, in reports, you can read that this is several dozen million, but uh, when we take into account uh, all the circumstances, all the funds that is really spent, it is more, it is 1 billion PLN. The next slides are a continuation of or illustration of the outcomes of the study that we discuss here. The introduction of biodiversity strategy, including the 10% uh, indicator, the medium range indicator for the EU, this is 2,700,000 hectares excluded from production, under strict protection. This slide shows the demand for and the, the capabilities of um, covering this demand for timber. This is a report by uh, uh, the UN and uh, the Institute of uh, Wood Technology from Poznan. Blue line, this is uh, the supply of timber, uh, depending on a report uh, by the private and uh, public sector. Yellow line, this is the supply of timber from state forests based on a prognosis made by Professor Buchwald and Gray line. This is the supply of uh, timber if the biodiversity strategy is implemented almost 40% lower, 40% less than now. So how we are supposed to fill in this gap? We can import timber, we've got certificates, but think about carbon footprint, cost of transport. This makes no sense simply. Or what instead of wood, what other uh, material can replace wood? Plastic, metal? Uh, steel industry was moved from uh, Europe to India, to India and to China. We've got carbon footprint related to uh, the cost of uh, transport and to the production of substitute materials. This makes no sense. 
Pan dyrektor Tomaszewski. Director Tomaszewski talked about it as well. Effectively zyskownej instytucji możemy stać się instytucją we are effective and rentable we as state for us but we might become a, a, a sector that is not profitable what about a self-financing rule czy nie, nie, obecna ustawa o lasach nie dopuszcza the current act on forests uh, does not provide for a possibility to have state financing so how are we supposed to to, to support ourselves we need new structure what about subsidiarity under the uh, state uh, under the forest uh, committee that Tomasz, um, director Tomaszewski mentioned if this uh, forest fund is non-existent because if there will, if there are such uh, financial losses, the fund will not exist. So what about the, the bodies uh, that are not profitable? The bodies uh, that uh, have the goal to protect climate. What about the unemployment? What about the funding of environment protection? I gave you one billion as an estimate, but uh, for national park, parks in the budget uh, law, we've got 300 million. So this is 30% of what state forests uh, spend on environment protection and inflows to the budget from state forests. This is also important and this will be lost. The units, the, the bodies that... Um, use timber they will decrease supply of timber will decrease so uh, the number of uh, uh, service providers that use timber will also decrease how to bridge this gap import transport if we are uh, to transport uh, raw material we should do this within eu this would be cheaper so um, uh, the outflow of capital into the states where the raw material is available Unemployment comes at stake uh, again. What about uh, small and medium enterprises? The majority of recipients of timber from state forests are small and medium enterprises. And I'm not talking about uh, for the, uh, wood industry only. In Poland, there are two million small and medium enterprises, and those two million small and medium enterprises generate 50% of the uh, GDP. And some of this, a part of this, are, uh, are small and medium enterprises uh, that work with wood, and uh, they are they operate on rural areas. These are very often micro companies. They give jobs. They activate uh, rural areas. A couple of more facts from an uh, expert report prepared by a Department of Marketing of the General Directorate of State Forests. The introduction of biodiversity strategy might lead to a situation where over 20, 100,000 people will uh, lose their jobs. This will have an impact on over 1% of working poles. The share of people employed in the wood industry in relation to employment in the total industry will uh, decrease by half. There will be limitation or even liquidation of production of 90% of companies located in rural areas. And the greatest uh, impact, the greatest increase in unemployment will take place in the areas with the highest registered unemployment. On top of that, there will be marginalization of the importance of Polish wood process, uh, processors in the international arena. Let me remind you that we are one of the most exporters of furniture in the world. We are an important producer uh, of... Um, Proszę Państwa, mówimy o strategii 2030. Wood-based panels. 
We are talking about the 2030 biodiversity strategy, but let's get back to the previous strategy, 2020 strategy. The 2020 strategy, well, it did not succeed. The, no indicator was reached. Uh, no indicator mentioned in the strategy. And uh, this is a discussion for a different meeting. We could uh, debate on this uh, for a very long time, how the indicators were created, why the climate change was not taken into account and so forth, so on and so forth. Uh, the current strategy also doesn't take into account the fact that the climate changes and the rise in uh, temperature by one per, by one uh, degree uh, remodels uh, the, the species, remodels uh, the environment. None of the indicators uh, have been reached uh, in the 2020 strategy. However, the indicators uh, looked best were in state forests all over Europe, where the multifunctional uh, forest management was implemented. These were the, the most successful areas. Thank you, professors, for an extensive uh, speech. Thank you for, for giving the speech. And now voice over to Mr. Tomasz Zawiłaniczwiecki, who will lead the next part of this conference. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Tomasz uh, Markiewicz, one of the main managers, so to speak, of this conference. Thank you. And now the next point on, on the next item on the agenda is And the next speaker is Igar Kalas, Vice President of the European Association of State Forest Eustafo. Let me add that Polish state forests are one of the main shareholders uh, of Eustafor and uh, co-founders of Eustafor. The floor is yours. Dzień dobry i dziękuję um, bardzo. Um, this is the only that I'm capable of um, doing in Polish. At this instance, um, it used to be better. And uh, I do promise um, with uh, your help today, uh, hopefully the discussions that will last longer afterwards and um, I could have a, uh, a chance to step in there as well, I'll learn some more or relearn um, some again. But now let's... Um, I'm extremely proud and honored to be um, here today in front of you, dear colleagues, because, uh, well, I see there are a lot of foresters uh, um, in the uh, audience, uh, and uh, me being a forester myself, um, I'm, um, just to introduce myself first, um, I've been uh, trained um, a forester uh, back in Estonia. I also um, have studied um, uh, forest and natural resource, particularly uh, forest, but also in a broader sense, natural resource economics uh, in the United States. And I have worked in the uh, field of forestry for, um, well, uh, 14 years um, uh, in a row at the current job um, as the um, managing director of the uh, Estonian state forests, which I'm um, also proud to present here today, as um, along with uh, the um, Ustafor um, organization that um, both um, Polish forests as well as Estonian forests, uh, state forests, are um, uh, members of. So let me see how I can uh, work it out and um, make it um, hopefully interesting for you um, as um, to, to uh, place ourselves and myself uh, to begin with. On the map at first, uh, this is the map of uh, state forest in Europe, which uh, you may or may not be familiar with. Um, it is tilted further towards uh, northeast uh, as far as uh, state forests are concerned. But, but unless, nonetheless, this is a reflection of the history of, uh, of our continent. When um, we talk about uh, Polish and Estonian membership to um, a uh, union of uh, state forests in, um, within Europe and, uh, well, more specifically uh, um, to the European Union, we're talking about uh, 36 members from 24 states that uh, have come together to share common views and understandings of uh, forestry and forest management 
which is uh, something that I will be uh, trying to do here to, um, for you as well on behalf of that organization. We are altogether one third of um, uh, European forests and we employ altogether 100,000 uh, people directly. I am well aware of the fact that uh, around one quarter or almost one quarter of those are um, actually do come from Poland. But nonetheless, the old, uh, other countries uh, have their share as well. As far as Estonia is concerned, again, to explain a bit of my own background, we are well, um, a forestry country, obviously, as well, 50% of the uh, country is covered with trees, um, or as a matter of fact, um, if you take parks, etc., with it's over 60%. But uh, what we call forest today is 50%, and 50% of those forests um, are managed by the state, the organization that um, I'm in charge of that RMK stands for State Forest Management Center. And the State Forest Management Center, in a nutshell, in Estonia, is one million hectares of forest, plus other um, um, land categories of um, about 40% on top of that. So altogether, we're uh, one third of the country. Uh, to characterize the forests and, and the way we deal with, uh, with them, 40% of them are protected. And we have uh, defined our, for ourselves in order to um, be able to well, run the organization uh, for me to begin with, but also to tell people what they should be expecting from us. We've defined six um, objectives for uh, state forest manager management in Estonia. We want to increase uh, forest productivity, we want to produce timber, we want to conserve the forest um, as, a, um, as, a, a, as a natural value, we want to provide recreation, we want to generate profit, and we certainly do provide workplaces. And when um, I just run through you very quickly, uh, run you through very quickly of the of the of the facts, the productivity increase over the past uh, what it says on the uh, over the past five years has been uh, well. You could say it could be even bigger, but it's been um, as you can read um, nearly 10%, which is actually well, if you think about how slow forests grow, quite significant. Um, of the uh, timber that we uh, grow, um, we uh, intend and actually do harvest 80% uh, um, uh, in what it grows a year. We um, conserve nature on top of the uh, what we've set aside for preservation, also in the form of restoring what um, humankind has. Uh, well, accomplished, so to speak, in a negative way uh, in the past. Um, and there is a, uh, a, a roof to it. Um, it shouldn't be too big. We provide recreation, as I said. Um, if, well, you might not know much about Estonia, but we are we're trying to have as many visitors as possible in the forest to enjoy the, the beauties of nature, um, provide health and uh, aware, health and uh, awareness and uh, as of um, currently every Estonian comes to state forests at least twice a year to, um, um, to get what we are providing. Well this is an average figure. Um, some people don't come at all, some people come um, 20 times instead of two but nonetheless this is, um, this is the statistics. We are uh, back in Estonia. We do make profit out of uh, forest management, and uh, we intend to continue making profit from forest management because that allows us providing those services, for instance, social recreation that I was referring to, and providing other services. What the state might uh, get from the fact that they have some money in their pocket um, when we talk about state budget, right? And as I said, it's a, it's all about. Well, maybe not all about, but uh, one sixth of it is all about employment. We are 600 people working at our organization for that million hectares of forest and 400,000 hectares of other um, land um, um, categories. But more importantly, we employ, taint, employ 10 times more in the forest as on a contractual basis. And even more importantly, we employ 100 times more people, and that is 1% of Estonian total workforce in forestry and related industries. So you can imagine it's quite significant of a sector for Estonia, and well, we 
do all of it under the heading of what, we, what our Austrian colleagues have drawn up in the, um, in the manner as you can see behind me, multi-purpose forestry, anything and everything you can get from, uh, from the woods. I particularly like the paragliding. That is, uh, uh, that is also a value that you can, uh, on this drawing, that you can uh, from, get from the forest because forests uh, help uh, to, to provide um, rising and, and, and falling air flows, right? And that helps the paraglides to, um, to, to, to glide. All of it we've done for almost 30 years now under one single species, one single sentence, sustainable management, as defined internationally for, or for all of us, as specified also for Europe by the European forestry ministers um, in year 1993. And, uh, well, you know, as foresters know this uh, sentence by heart. I'm, I'm not telling that at all, so you don't have to read it. But what I've decided to underline here is that the, um, the most important part, I think, at least in this sentence, uh, has always been we provide all those services now and forever in the future. Forever. But when it comes to forestry and, uh, and, and trying to figure out how the, um, our different institutions are perceiving it and, uh, and how they're documenting it and how they are uh, setting goals and objectives to it, well, this picture depicting only a few of, um, of, of EU different regulations, policies, uh, what have you, uh, documents on, on forestry is almost as uh, colourful at least and, uh, and um, uh, full of variety as that uh, Austrian um, drawing of forest management. And which in some ways makes me proud because apparently uh, forests are important enough in Europe that everybody wants to have a, a say in it um, or have a piece of it, if you will. Um, at the same time, if everybody wants to have a piece of it or have a say in it, then, well, where is the say for the foresters in it? Is there anything left? And, uh, and, and, and it really is um, something that has... Uh, has bothered me quite a bit because everybody with those different documents, regulations, uh, et cetera, et cetera, what they want to, to achieve is to, to make sure that their item, their goal, their objective is the most important one, right? So, and, and uh, by that they say, well, we want everything at once, immediately at once. And as a forester in Estonia, and I'm sure also in Poland, you know that in forests, you don't get things at once. You don't s plant a tree and you, you don't get a... Uh, it's a full-grown forest at once. So what I was particularly happy with, and I'm sure you all uh, share the same uh, feeling um, as me, when the European Commission in, 19, uh, in 2019 came out with the uh, Green Deal proposition, right? And, uh, and, 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 and define the, uh, the, what we want to achieve together is that we want to become the first climate neut neutral continent uh, by 2050 in the world, right? And, and of course, well, to, it was very close to my heart. Everybody wants to become first. First in class, first at the Olympics, first in the world. Beautiful. Uh, but more, even more importantly, in this sentence, in this goal for me, was the, uh, the last bit of it, the figure 2050. First, for the first time over the past 10, maybe 20 years, somebody said, okay, we don't have to have it at once. Well, we'll do it in 30 years' time. And that, that, that made sense. Even for me as a forester, because in Estonia, I don't grow forests in 30 years, as of yet. But it, it is still more than at once. And in 30 years, if you do something in the forest, as you well know, something already starts happening. You can see the result. And so it was very close to my heart also reading the, the, what the uh, Commission proposed and what everybody, the Council, the Parliament agreed to. We have to take better care of the forest and we have to expand the forest. And, and these, these goals were, again, music to my ears. I, uh, I, uh, I don't deny it, there is nothing to hide, and I'm sure it was, it, it was a music to your, your ears, ears as well. Because, well, knowing what, the, um, what is going on, the, uh, or has been going on in, in the forest in, in Europe, uh, as well as in Estonia, as I showed you, throughout the past, say, 100 years, which is, say, well, we have a saying in Estonian, 
forests grow 100 years. I'm sure it correlates to what you have here in, in, in Poland as well, right? So in the 100 years time, we have been able to do really well in our forest. And so what I read from that Green Deal proposition was that continue doing what you're doing and, 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 and we'll be doing even better. Instead, what we've heard is that, boom, we have our forests under attack, under various, under various attacks, well, under the heading of climate change, of course, but in principle, well, fire, bark beetle, dieback uh, uh, from drought, etc., etc., what you all, again are all aware of as well, it, that comes from not so good forestry. And I'm saying, hmm, where did we go wrong? What do you mean, not so good forestry? We've been practicing forestry, we, the forests are growing, etc., etc., and now you're saying, well, you're, for, you're not doing well in your forest, and in order to um, alleviate that problem, to, to solve that problem, what we need to do is, you know what we need to do. And I, but before we, we even come back to it, I was trying to still, for myself as a, as a plain, simple forester, to, to figure out, so what, is, what, what was it really that we did wrong in the, in, in the forest, that they are dying now? And, uh, and I tried to look back to, say, start, on this graph, I'm depicting the uh, energy consumption well, by source, um, as uh, presented um, at the, uh, at, again, public records, our world, uh, starting from 1950s, which is about the time of, timeline of a, of a uh, forest rotation age in Estonia. And I look back to it and I, I understand that, well, knowing the causes of, of, of climate change, knowing the... Um, the, uh, knowing it from school, knowing from uh, it all the um, headlines and, and the documents presented, I understand that within this period of time that we've been, uh, we've been trying to practice as good forest, uh, forest as we can, the causes of um, climate change have quadrupled. And the causes are not that we are, uh, we are practicing bad, bad forestry, but the causes are depicted on this graph as uh, oil, coal, gas. And if I now even go back even further and think of the, where it all got started from, if I, if I think along the lines of, well, 100 years to grow the, the, the trees and, 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 and my being, thinking back to, to being a forester 100 years ago, doing that tree planting that we are doing today, that, and, and trying to think if, if that forester did something wrong. No, I don't think that forester did anything wrong. I think that forester who put the, uh, the, uh, the tree in the ground and started taking care of it as, as it did, did everything right because as we see also from this graph, this uh, again, what you're all familiar with, I'm, sh I'm sure, from the EU uh, Fit for 55 package, forestry throughout this time, and this is from 2005 onwards, it has also been the past hundred years into the back, has been the only sector of the economy that actually has provided benefits to the climate and compensated throughout this time for what oil, coal, etc., etc., have caused and brought about. And th that climate that is uh, damaging our forest, is, is not damaging it because the foresters did something wrong, but, uh, but, but because somebody else did something wrong. And is that now fair to say that, well, in order to alleviate the problem, you foresters, since you don't really know how to take care of the forest because you see the forests are, are, are dying, well, we now take, take it away from you and say, we set it aside, we put it and, and you, so you don't, you don't get to touch it. Well, I'm, I'm looking at it, uh, at this graph of, uh, of the impact of, uh, of it being to, to uh, EU. Um, this graph is um, depicting some other countries as well that are not EU members, but nonetheless, I'm looking at this graph and I'm thinking this one goal policy of, of 30% set aside for EU made me think, I'm a proud father of two daughters, they go to school every morning. I talk to the teachers, if, if half of the class comes to, gets to school an hour before the classes start, and half of the class comes to school an hour later, the classes start, does that mean the class, the school starts on average on time? No, I guess it doesn't. Now the proposal for, the, for all of us through this, 
does that now really fit us all? Does, does the, looking at the graph here on the um, left-hand side, Switzerland having about 55% set aside of their forest today, and Slovenia 55% set aside, um, does, that, does that indicate now that uh, the Swiss people are doing something really wrong, or their forests are very in, in very bad conditions, and now they should do something about it, and, and, and put more under protection in order to get a value out of it. No, I don't think so. Take Sweden and Luxembourg from, uh, from the, to the other ends within the EU. Well, if Luxembourg, who has 50% of the forest un, uh, under uh, conservation today, well, doubles it, that makes it 100. Does that make a difference for Europe? But what if uh, Sweden adds 1%? Well, you, you can all do the math. Um, Eustafor is, um, and me as a forester, um, in Estonia, um, are not honestly happy with this situation. We have um, identified and figured a proposal that we uh, have put forward, and not only us, but all other forest management organizations in Europe as well, have put forward onto how to go f uh, further with the biodiversity strategy for 2030 in Europe. Furthermore, we have also looked into the uh, forest strategy that is the history is in the making, as you're well aware. Um, as of this week, as of next week, in Brussels, much will be decided upon us, right, through this document, as much as this document is, uh, is saying anything. I'm not going to read it um, one by one out loud, but we do see a reason to actually go further about forest management. And with the, with the last minute of, um, of this talk, I want to show the, a picture of the, uh, to my mind, to, from a perfect uh, forest management textbook. Um, look at this picture for a second. For it's a it's a um, crosscut of a 35-year-old uh, uh, spruce that, for the first 30 years, was left alone. For the past, uh, then, for some for whatever reasons, uh, not under my control. Then a forester had a chance to come along did what he had to do, and look, at, look what happened the next five years. And, and if I'm not mistaken, and I don't think I'm mistaken in this, in this respect, that carbon curve that is cause, causing the damage, that carbon has now gone into this um, tree and is, if allowed to do that, going to help us to get over that problem, which we have not caused, and which we won't be able to do alone, but we can help and contribute, and that is what we want to do. Hopefully, they let us, if we are now ordered to plant three billion trees, uh, not to set them aside, but actually take care of them into the future as well. I apologize for having been uh, 10 seconds late. Thank you. Thank you very much, Edgar, for a very nice, uh, broad uh, and deeply analyzed example, starting from national till European-wide. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker to come is Georg Schirmbeck, head of the German Forestry Council. Georg is not only the head of uh, the Forestry Council, like I said, he is also former member of Parliament of Bundestag and former head of Polish German Parliamentary Group. And uh, Bogdan Witkowski of the German uh, Forestry Association will support him. Ladies and gentlemen, kind greetings from Germany. This is a wonderful meeting. We are all unanimous. Europa gerade etwas schief. 
ale pomimo tego w Europie coś idzie nie tak. And genuinely uh, something is not going like it should in Europe. And how is that possible? Was der Vorredner eben gesagt hat, noch einmal vorstellen. Chciałbym się tutaj krótko przedstawić. Let me introduce myself. Ich bin der Präsident des Deutschen Forstwirtschaftsrates. Jestem przewodniczącym niemieckiej Rady. I am the head of the German Forest Economy Council. Co się za tym kryje? What does that mean? In meinem Verband sind alle forstlichen Akteure in Deutschland zusammengefasst. W mojej organizacji są wszystkie poważniejsze podmioty, które są zaangażowane. That deal in forestry. Wszystkie formy własności lasów, klasy gminne, klasy państwowe i lasy prywatne. All forms of ownership of forests, national, private, and local authorities. Gewerkschaften. Organizacje leśników. Organizations of foresters. Organizations. Skupiające pracodawców i pracowników. Of employers and employees of the forest sector. Similar to the solidarity movement. Aber auch Hochschulen oder Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen Forstwirtschaft haben. Aber auch Leute, die eine besondere Expertise in Sachen und deshalb sind wir ein ernstzunehmender Ansprechpartner gegenüber unserer Regierung. Das ist, warum wir als Regierung und auch als Regierung Aber überwiegend we are not always uh, nice to the government. We are not always happy with what they are doing, but usually we achieve what we plan to achieve. Uh, what does it look like in Europe? Der uh, umweltpolitische Berater des uh, polnischen Staatspräsidenten hat heute Morgen gesagt, uh, in den europäischen Verträgen kommt Forstwirtschaft nicht vor. Tak jak żeśmy słyszeli, że od prezydenta Polska, jeżeli te And Europe cares about soil. What is forestry? Forestry includes all these things that have been mentioned a moment ago. Also, war zu erwarten über kurz oder lang beschäftigen Sie sich in Europa mit Forstwirtschaft. So, if whether we want to admit it or not, Europe takes care about forestry. Es ist ja immer schön, wenn man Recht hat. Every, everybody wants to be right. Ich habe vor zwölf Jahren in Deutschland vorgeschlagen, wir müssen stärker ago, in Europa in Brüssel in Aktion gehen. Ich habe in Europa vorgeschlagen, dass wir in Brüssel in Aktion gehen. Es war also nicht möglich, dass, dass wir dort unsere Stimme erhoben haben oder dass wir beobachtet haben, was dort äh, beschlossen wird. Back then, our opinions were not heard. Our voice was not heard in Europe. Und jetzt passiert es. Plötzlich hören wir für einen Green Deal. But it has changed. Uh, we have a new, brand new European Green Deal. If we were organized, we would have seen what was developing in the European Union. If we had been better organized, we would have had the European Green Deal a couple of years ago. Wenn wir uns viel eher darum gekümmert hätten, dann hätten wir die Entwicklung beeinflussen können. Jetzt müssen wir abwehren, den größten Schaden vermeiden. Jeżeli byśmy się zapuścili o to wcześniej, wcześniej, to wtedy nie musielibyśmy teraz się starać o to, żeby te skutki dla naszego gospodarki były takie, jakie się zdarzają.
ale nie możemy patrzeć do tyłu, bo się zawsze patrzeć do przodu. Es ist etwas Gutes, dass wir feststellen können, dass wir hier im Saal, also ich sag It's mal, die baltischen Staaten, Polen und Deutschland, dass wir Baltic uns einig sind States, und dass wir wissen, dass wir uns uh, einig Germany, sind mit allen europäischen Ländern. Das ist ein gutes Gefühl, dass wir wissen, dass wir uns einig sind mit allen europäischen Ländern. Das ist ein gutes Gefühl, dass wir są istotnymi krajami o dużej lesistości i jednym głosem jesteśmy lots of forest areas so it's really great that we speak with one voice und ich bin auch sicher wenn wir unsere gemeinsame politische kraft einbringen dass wir das schlimmste verhindern können and i am sure that if we act together we can prevent the worst outcomes ist das leben ja nicht zu ende ale jeżeli dzisiaj się nasza konferencja skończy, to nie znaczy, że się skończy to Our conference may be over in a couple of hours, but the life is not over. There will be more and more European regulations concerning forestry and what we do on everyday basis. That's why we need to learn from the current situation. We need to work jointly co się teraz stało i musimy na arenie europejskiej ściśle ze sobą współpracować. Wir haben den Forstwissenschaften, Forstwissenschaftlichen und Forstwirtschaftlichen Sachverstand. My mamy We have experts available, experts on forestry. We have knowledge and experience concerning forest management. Kann eine Regierung ähnliche Organisation einen größtmöglichen Schaden einrichten? Jak we to się can dzieje, bring że, harm rządy czy podobne to government uh, and uh, similar organizations. Ohne die Sachverständigen, die sie eigentlich zur Verfügung haben, zu beteiligen. Governments very often make laws that are not based on scientific knowledge. They introduce regulations that do not refer to the current stand of knowledge. If you have a bellyache, you go to a doctor. If you have problems with the taxes or another financial issue, you go to an accountant or to a bank. And if you want to deal with forestry, you don't go to the government, you go to experts that know the topic. If you have a problem with land, you don't go to ideologists. Leśnych, tylko do fachowców, jacy, jacy, jakim są leśnicy. Ich bin, są einige, leśnicy? ich bin einige hundert Mal in Polen gewesen. I've been to Poland many, many times. Ich glaube, ich kenne Ihre Wälder. Ich I think I know your się, forests. Znam państwa lasy. Die sind gut. Są dobre, mi lasy. They are good. Sie machen gute schulische uh, uh, Ausbildung. Macie, you have good państwo, education. Dobrze, swoją kadrę leśną. Klar gibt es immer an der einen oder anderen Stelle auch noch etwas zu verbessern. Natürlich muss man muss man zurück zu Schweden, man muss man zurück zu dann, wo es anders ist, wo es etwas besser ist. 18 Professoren sind hier, die sind ja jeden Tag bemüht, noch bessere Ergebnisse zu bekommen. Every day they are trying to come to increasingly good solutions. Verbessern. Und wir werden ja töricht, wenn wir diese neuen Erkenntnisse nicht einbauen würden. And it would be really stupid to not to take into account those solutions, those outcomes. Aber wir wissen von unseren Forstwissenschaftlern auch, dass von allen Landnutzungsarten die Biodiversität in den Wäldern die beste ist. And we know that biodiversity is best in forests. We know it from our experts. Ich erwarte von, die, von denen, die uns mit neuen Regeln überfallen wollen, dass man das erstmal überhaupt zur Kenntnis nimmt. And if you want to create legislation, you need to take this into account in the first place. Meine Damen und Herren, wir müssen für gentlemen. unsere Wälder und den Menschen, die dazugehören, Uns engagieren. We need to engage ourselves for forests and for the people who work for the forests and who live off the forests. Our forests are very much engaged. 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 Our forests are
es gibt immer and we should have similar bodies all over the world. There are always things that you have a different opinion on. Und Polen haben doch überhaupt keine Schwierigkeiten in der Bewertung der Situation But und in der Beschreibung, was zukünftig gemacht werden muss. Aber wenn Sie sich von Polen, von Deutschland, von Austria, die sprechen mit einer Sprache, wenn es um die Forest geht. Ich habe das vorhin gegenüber der Presse schon gesagt. Am 19. Januar, am 19. Januar 2022, ich würde Sie einladen, nach Berlin zu kommen. Ich bitte die Delegation der Polen nach Niemiec. Das ist am Tag vor der Eröffnung der Internationalen Grünen Woche, wo immer etwa 50 Agrarminister sind. To jest dzień przed otwarciem zielonego tygodnia, gdzie jest około 50. Approximately 50 ministers from all over Europe will take place in various activities. So there will be important actors that make decisions concerning forests. They will be there in Berlin. And this will make it possible for us to sit together at the table and to present our expectations. The forestry in Europe is an example, a role model for the entire world. We are proud Jesteśmy naprawdę dumni z tego, co żeśmy byli w stanie utworzyć, i oczywiście chcemy dalej to rozwijać, ale chcemy to rozwijać na bazie wiedzy, nauki, osiągnięć nauki, a nie na bazie jakiejś ideologii. And in this sense, I would like to ask you, the authorities, Polish authorities, to work with us in the coming months. Please come to Berlin. Please involve. Wenn das, was uh, please engage yourself in the activities wird, that will take place wollen, in Berlin. We need to act jointly. We will succeed if we work together, if we do not base our activities on some ideologies, but on the current stand of knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Vielen Dank, Georg, für Ihren interessanten Vortrag und äh, wichtige Zusammenarbeit, Kooperation, Zusammenkooperation, äh, Vorschläge. Vielen Dank. Nach dem äh, Mufzon ist Pan Jarosław Kuczaj. Der nächste Speaker ist Jarosław Kuczaj. Yes, Jarek. Yes, Jarek. Jarek, are Który you jest with us? polskim reprezentantem Europejskiej Federacji na rzecz łowiectwa i zachowania przyrody, FACE, z siedzibą w Dziękuję serdecznie. Szanowni Państwo, Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to my previous speakers on their great speeches, great presentations. In my presentation, I would like to focus on the biodiversity strategy in terms of natural resources management. We all remember 20 May of 2020, the announcement of the biodiversity strategy together Together with the farm to fork strategy, it creates or it is dedicate it dedicates some activities of agricultural users and hunters. We've talked a lot about cooperation and the cooperation between hunters and. 
foresters is crucial as well. I wszystkie te strategie, all the strategies, e, polityka rolna i tak common dalej, agricultural ławy, policy and so on and so forth e, are part of the European życia, Green Deal that is supposed to improve the quality of life of people, well-being and Europy. biodiversity in Europe. Wiele, e, the biodiversity e, strategy 2030 is necessary and lots of uh, uh, the topics raised there are important, but as a federation we have questioned the provisions on the prohibition to hunt uh, on areas uh, where the strict protection. They are against the initiative of sustainable hunting in the EU. EU Sustainable Hunting Initiative, and most of all, they prohibit this game management in a broad sense, in the context of management, in the context of minimizing certain dangers, and so on and so forth. Also, the lack of control of invasive of the numbers of invasive species is at stake here. Documents concerning biodiversity, well. We remember from 18 years ago, what I mean here is the Convention on Biological Diversity. Uh, within the goals of this convention, we had the preservation of biodiversity, sustainable usage of resources, and uh, just uh, division of uh, benefits. Uh, Poland is one of the signatories of the, conven of the convention since 1996, and it is committed to, uh, to observe the provisions of the convention. What's the stage of uh, implementation of provisions on biodiversity? Well, we might uh, answer this question in each of us uh, for, uh, for ourselves. Uh, yet another document from the past on biodiversity. Uh, this was uh, a document that is uh, not used extensively in Poland. This is the European Charter on Hunting and Biodiversity. It was approved by the Steering uh, Committee of the uh, Brno Convention. And this is a, an incentive to cooperate uh, to all the stakeholders uh, uh, um, government agencies, uh, owners, uh, users of uh, agricultural land, including uh, researchers, scientists, uh, and also NGOs. Do zrównoważonego użytkowania incentive to sustainable usage and no, preservation of natural resources. We also uh, should mention that uh, there are documents. Uh, in place who do not provide the possibility to manage the resources of, uh, of resources because conservation and protection, well, protection is including in conservation, but uh, being guided by protection only is not what we want to have. This is not adequate. This is targeted translation only for uh, protection. Uh, the assumptions of the European Charter on Hunting and Biodiversity, well, at the beginnings were 2004. The beginnings, uh, well, it was initiated in Warsaw in 2004, and uh, we wanted to prevent uh, degradation, and we wanted to maintain resources and to uh, recognize the needs of local communities. And as I've mentioned, the charter as, uh, as privilege, uh, as equal rights, at the local level, uh, it, it was understood as a just division of benefits and, most importantly, the right of each and every uh, um, human being to, to manage the natural resources. Are the owners of land in Poland uh, stakeholders um, when it comes to the management? Well, the answer is obvious. I would really like to show you and to, to 
to be able to look at such beautiful pictures as the one presented in the screen. That's why the agricultural and environmental schemes are crucial. They are necessary for farmers. Farmers need such support in order to be able to, to really preserve the resources of biodiversity and common agricultural policy post-2020. Any initiatives concerning the preservation of biodiversity need to be supported to some extent by hunters as well. That's why our federation has a platform, Biodiversity Manifest, where hunting organizations can aggregate projects and local initiatives, thanks to which we are able to know, we are able to respond, and we have strong voice in discussion, because hunters, together with the, the local uh, community, farmers, they have been active uh, for many, many years years uh, in terms of preserving um, biodiversity. We've got over uh, 500 projects uh, and uh, we always ask for more. From among those projects, uh, we can analyze some of them and we can uh, come to inter interesting outcomes. Uh, please pay attention to the first uh, slide. Uh, the projects uh, are mostly about uh, the environment uh, and habitats and species. So the elements without which um, a species or habitat would not function if there are projects all on the restoration of, uh, of uh, species, then what we need are actions on uh, improving uh, the conditions uh, for the life of the species. The second graph shows what has been mentioned by, uh, by Minister, both strategies uh, of biodiversity and from FARC to, uh, to FORC. Well, they need to focus on the cooperation between farmers and hunters and over 40% of uh, uh, those projects refer to agricultural uh, areas, uh, water reservoirs, where um, biodiversity, where uh, species, uh, where biodiversity concerning species is uh, the highest. As I've mentioned in the beginning, the word conservation, well, it includes management, protection, and preservation. I've been talking about this for, uh, for uh, many, many times, but it is crucial for the preservation of biodiversity, resource management, also through hunting, where protection, well, we cannot forget about this, where, where, where protection is taken into account and, and is really crucial. Uh, to wrap up, I would like to, to refer to the speech by Minister Pavel Sauko, who mentioned a very important thing when it comes to the uh, biodiversity strategy. At the very end, in conclusions of the European Commission document, uh, there is a sentence saying that the Commission will review the strategy by 2024 to assess progress and uh, uh, to assess uh, at what stage and whether further action is needed to meet the objectives. So whether the, uh, the, the preservation of biodiversity is at the right stage, and if not, Commission might review the existing uh, legislation. And as Minister mentioned, uh, we might see a new directive on ecosystems, on environment. Uh, as uh, a replacement for the existing um, bird directive or a habitat directive. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. These are important issues are often not spoken about aloud, swept under the carpet. This is an issue, also an element of ecosystem preservation, because game is part of ecosystems. 
Well, certainly it's better to manage a deer rather than import Argentinian beef for creating carbon footprint. This was um, an employee, uh, among others, of the Toruń uh, uh, State Forest. So, as you can see, such professionals are consultants of the most important Brussels institutions that decide about the future of our environment. So, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Next speaker. Silvia Melegari, Secretary General of the European Organization of the Sawmill Industry. And she is going to talk to us about the point of view of the organization. So, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. I'm going to present, uh, uh, first of all, uh, who we are, CEBUA in US. CEBUA is uh, the European Confederation of the Woodworking Industry. We represent uh, 16 nations, um, four uh, European sector federation, one com and one commercial uh, public establishment. The primary goal of uh, CEBUA is promoting the interest of the European woodworking industry, particularly contributing to the EU policy-making process. The uh, objective, the mission of our confederation is to promote the sector, but also the use of wood in the different uh, fora at European level, but also international level, for example, in the meeting of uh, FAO. And of course, uh, our objective is also to promote the sustainability uh, of wood and a wood-based product. The European woodworking industry employs 3.1 million people across uh, the EU27, or 10.3% uh, uh, of the manufacturing uh, total. But then uh, I'm also the Secretary General of US, the European Organization of the, of the Sawmill Industry. The Sawmill Industry counts 35,000 sawmill in Europe, and mainly they are a small, uh, small micro enterprise. The production in 2020 was uh, 100 uh, 112.3 million solid cubic meters, and that represents both uh, hardwood and uh, softwood. Mainly, depending on the year, we export 25-28% of the product, hardwood and softwood, outside Europe, and the, uh, the main countries are China, Japan, but also North Africa. What is very important is that the European sawmill industry only use wood coming from the European forest, meaning that what affects uh, uh, the forest affects also the sawmill. Another particular uh, point about the sawmill industry is that uh, we have a publication every summer. It's our annual report, and the first part is dedicated to the market analysis. On top of the data that we collect from different sources, we also have a data collection directly from our members. And here you have an extract, for example. We collect a hardwood, uh, sawn softwood production and sawn hardwood production. This, is a, um, this collection is done during the springtime. And then we have also another data collection uh, that is done in the winter in the framework of the international softwood uh, conference that uh, this year uh, will take place uh, uh, next, uh, next week. If you look at the numbers uh, for the EOS uh, members, uh, you have a production in 2020 that was uh, almost 86 million, while as you can see is very marginal, the production of uh, hardwood, it's uh, uh, five, almost six million. Important to, un to underline that if you look, uh, Romania is the country who has lost the most if you look at the 2020 and 2019 with a minus 14 percent. While it's also important to notice that France, who is a big hardwood producer, has lost 10 percent 2020-2019. So that is just in order to give you an overview of, uh, of the sun market. So, uh, now let's jump at the, the, the point of this uh, conference, the forestry strategy and the bio biodiversity strategy. 
So we have been discussing a lot about the negative points, so I thought it could be interesting also to see what are the positive points of, uh, of the strategy. But first of all, the forest strategy really promotes the sustainable produce and long-life wood-based product. Uh, because uh, it is recognized that they can help to achieve uh, climate neutrality by storing carbon and substituting fossil-based material. Uh, the wood products are also recognized as a tool for achieving the objective of the, renewable, uh, uh, of the renovation wave strategy, but also of the new initiative, the European Bauhaus. The European Bauhaus has not legislative power, it's just an EU promotional uh, initiative to create a more sustainable environment uh, for, uh, um, for buildings. In this respect, we are also following closely uh, the new roadmap 2050 for reducing the whole life cycle carbon emission in buildings, but also the revision of the construction product regulation. And in this respect, the Commission will develop a standard uh, and a methodology to quantify the climate benefit of wood construction products and other building materials. So there is a big chapter in this uh, forestry strategy dedicated to the wood product and the positive role in, uh, in construction. So the, all these are positive elements. Um, then again, the, the Commission emphasized the opportunities that uh, we may have as woodworking industry in the framework of the European Bauhaus and encouraged to use unutilized wood species, but also the hardwood species. This is of interest because many scientific papers predict that we will have a change in the raw material in Europe, we will have more hardwood species, so it is important to find a new utilization. Um, there are also mention of the innovation funds, so funds that will be given to research for new application of wood product. There is a paragraph dedicated to the cascading use of wood, here you can see in the red, and I will explain you in a moment what exactly it is and what is the position of our sector. Um, the Commission is also working to certificate framework. Uh, for, the for, uh, um, for action for the production and the use of, of long-life product in the full respect of uh, uh, the biodiversity objective. There is already a consultancy in Brussels who is working on this, is Trinomics. This is the title of the, of the study, how to incentivize the use of wood in construction and carbon sink while ensuring that is harvested um, in a sustainable manner. What they want to do is to create a reliable measure of the CO2 captured in a wood-based construction product and to design a market-based carbon credit scheme uh, for the sustainable use of wood-based construction products. So these are, in a nutshell, are the opportunities that are given by the forestry strategy in relation of, uh, um, of wood product, of the use of wood product. Another point uh, that uh, can be tricky, we put it here as in a green light, but it will depend how it will be, it will be organized by the Commission. It's uh, this uh, uh, monitoring of uh, the status of health of forests, including the impact of invasive island species, and in particular the bark beetle. Um, the propagation of bark beetle affected particularly the sawmill industry in, uh, in the past year. Here you can see the graph who present how much uh, uh, was the impact of the bark beetle propagation. So it's calculated 300 million uh, solid cubic meter of damaged wood in 2018-2020. But also, as you can see, there is a predicted reduction of the propagation of the bark beetle and the wood that will be harvested in, uh, in this respect. So for the woodworking industry to have an overview of what are the projection of the bark beetle, what it can be the impact of the sector, it could be something interesting. Um, and, th and that is why here is market with uh, a thumbs up in, in green. So I said that uh, the Commission will also present, uh, um, as already emphasized, this cascading use of wood. But what exactly it is? The cascading use of wood was invented actually by the woodworking industry. It was a tool that we were using to compare the wood product to other material. And we were saying uh, wood product can be used, reused, recycled, and it can also be 
at the end of the life cycle used for energy purposes. When it was created by the sector, the cascading use of wood was seen in, uh, uh, in respect of the carbon cycle of the forest. So it was really a tool that we were using to compare wood product to other material. What happened? The Commission got interested in this subject and now it is using to describe the level of deficiency uh, that the wood resources are used. So there is no anymore a comparison with other material. It's how you use your wood in the forestry value chain. Uh, our major concern is that there are several definitions of cascading, but the most alarming is that cascading should start in the sawmill, meaning that somehow you should decide uh, um, to give first a material utilization of your residues rather than uh, an energy application, so completely disregarding any market consideration. What we are trying to explain to the Commission is, of course, uh, that the market is uh, the first element that uh, should be looked at, but that uh, the sector already works uh, in an uh, efficient manner, that uh, the way we utilize the resources, of course, uh, correspond to, to market needs, uh, and that uh, it is natural for a sawmill uh, to utilize uh, first uh, his, uh, his uh, timber for, uh, uh, for a material application. We will never produce pellets with valuable wood. The same applies for the forest owner. They will never, uh, you will never find a forest owner who will sell uh, valuable wood for, uh, for sawmill to, for energy production. Uh, so now we, we start with the, uh, with the concern about, about the, the strategy. But first of all, uh, we feel that overall, despite this positive point that I just highlighted, the strategy fails to recognize the complexity of the forest-based industry. Uh, it is recognized the contribution of wood product uh, to decarbonize the building sector, but nevertheless uh, completely disregard the supply uh, needs of the industry. He puts forward a top-down, one-size-fits-all approach in the utilization of the wood product. It completely disappeared the concept of wood mobilization in previous forest strategy, because this is not uh, the first one, it's actually the third one. There was always uh, this uh, chapter dedicated to wood mobilization, how to get out more wood of the forest, how to motivate the forest owner to sell to the sector. This element is completely neglected as well uh, also the improvement in logistic in the, in the mountain area, that it could be a, um, a topic that uh, it would have been interesting for uh, the sector. So uh, another element that uh, we are asking for is that when uh, uh, these silviculture scenarios and practices are proposed in the strategy, uh, are developed, they should ensure not only the, um, the environmental uh, protection, but also the sustainable provision in the medium and long term of the raw materials for the European bioeconomy, so of course not just for the sawmill but, or the woodworking industry, but for the, entire, uh, for the entire value chain. This is probably the most crucial point. Many of you have highlighted that there will be an impact uh, of the, uh, of the biodiversity strategy, of the forestry strategy on wood availability. But this exercise, quantify what uh, uh, is this impact, it should have been a responsibility of the Commission and not by the private sector or, uh, uh, or other body who investigate. Before to put forward the legislation, you need to know what there will be the consequences. And this impact assessment has not been done. Another concern also for the forest, uh, also for the wood industry, is the fact that the Commission is somehow attempting to uh, redefine what it should be sustainable forest management. Uh, they would like to also put forward a threshold and benchmark. In this respect, uh, the, um, the woodworking industry, but uh, also together with the forest owner uh, represented in Brussels by CPF and also EUSAFOR, we are clearly opposing to this, uh, to this process. We are trying to explain to the Commission that already Forest Europe have developed uh, indicators, guidelines, and it is in this respect that uh, uh, we have to continue to move because the Commission itself is a member of uh, Forest Europe. 
There's uh, uh, indicators that have been uh, um, developed by Forest Europe uh, taking consideration uh, the difference amongst the different regions. So this is uh, what uh, uh, we, are calling, uh, we are calling for. Then uh, just a few words also about the, the biodiversity strategy. So an, an important point is that uh, when you read the biodiversity strategy, what you perceive is that the fact of uh, an utilization for economic purposes some of the forest, somehow it's not protecting the forest. So our, our message, it has been, and it is right now, that integrating timber production with biodiversity protection, it is an essential part of uh, uh, the biodiversity because uh, um, healthy forests are also connected to the use of wood. The income from wood is essential to the forest owner to invest in their forest to provide uh, the sustainable forest management and can provide the best resistance and stability to climate change while preserving biodiversity without a negative affecting the quality and quantity of wood production. The commission in the forestry strategy is investigation of, as I said before, of what it should be the most appropriate uh, forest management. In doing this, uh, we recognize as industry that climate change has an impact uh, in uh, forest, but when uh, these uh, uh, elements are analyzed, it's not just about the biodiversity that we have to look at, but we also have to understand what they will be the impact of this decision on, uh, on wood production. Um, another important point before to conclude uh, regarding uh, the biodiversity strategy is that the identification of protected area it should be done, of course, taking, taking care of uh, uh, the expertise of member states, uh, the different uh, region. So this has to be done in coordination with the member states, with the competent authority, but also taking into account what it will be the impact uh, uh, of the... Um, in terms of raw material supply for, uh, for the sector. Uh, we know that uh, Poland have uh, done this, the, wood, the Polish wood chamber of, uh, of the wood industry has done this. Uh, we know that in Sweden has been done, but again, at European level, we do not have this uh, number. We receive information, but it's quite alarming that the Commission is putting forward target without actually knowing what it will be the consequences in terms of uh, raw material supply, uh, loss of uh, employment in the area, and closing down of business. Um, we need an holistic vision when we discuss about uh, the, the, the biodiversity strategy or the forestry strategy. We have to understand that uh, producing wood product is part of the solution uh, for, uh, um, for reducing the emission in, in Europe, that there are material application and these are positive, but uh, forest can also provide the resource for uh, renewable energy, and this is also equally, equally important. Overall, uh, our perception is that uh, there is uh, uh, too much uh, focus on the carbon sink function of, uh, of a forest, and another, very, uh, another approach that we consider incorrect is that uh, forest protection is associated by the Commission uh, to no harvesting. You can protect your forest and you can uh, continue to, to harvest. And then, uh, just to, to conclude, we shall not forget that actually Europe is responsible only for 8% of the overall greenhouse gas emission. So what? While it is important to become carbon neutral, we should look also at the carbon footprint of what we are actually importing from other countries and at what other countries are doing. Because in any case, to use the forest as a sink, but then to have other countries that continue to emit, it won't solve any problem. Thank you very much. for a very deep, deep analysis and holistic attempt. I think that what lacks in our discussion is uh, the voice from the wood industry. Ten głos, 
in the discussion. So we are really glad uh, that uh, the voice uh, presented by Sylvia complements uh, what we are talking about today. And, uh, z drugiej strony śladu węglowego sequestration of CO2 and uh, carbon footprint, footprint that might lead to the implementation of the strategy. This is really crucial. Thank you, Sylvia. Ladies and gentlemen, 15 minutes break. And we are back in the room at uh, 2.40.
że wchodzimy na wizję i wtedy zaczynamy to. Zapraszamy do sali.
Witam Państwa po przerwie. Wznawiamy nasze Okej, okay, let's reconvene. I kolejnym mówcą jest the next Rafał speaker is Rafał Gruszczyński from the Polish Economic Chamber of Wood Industry. He will present the perspective of the wood sector. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Most of all, I'm glad that uh, there are so many of us, both from Poland and from abroad. We've got representatives of the government, representatives of science, of industry. On the one hand, I am happy that biodiversity is interesting to such a large number of uh, people and sectors. But on the other hand, I am worried because the strategy on biodiversity affects so many sectors and so many people. I will try to tell you um, a couple of words about how industry might be affected by the strategy on biodiversity if uh, the guidelines on the implementation of the strategy were reintroduced uh, in the current shape, so as, as planned. I represent the Polish uh, Economic, Economic Chamber of uh, the Wood Industry. This is an association of uh, companies that deal with the processing of solid wood. 140 companies, small family owned businesses, uh, but also large enterprises, huge players in the market. The mission of the chamber is to support the development of uh, the wood industry and wood industry companies in Poland, integration of entrepreneurs and initiating cooperation between entrepreneurs. Do we have uh, wood industry in Poland? Yes, we do. And uh, it is quite significant. Uh, it, uh, it is important for the entire uh, economy. The Polish wood industry uh, accounts for over 2% of, uh, of GDP uh, in the country and uh, accounts for 8 to 12 percent of the value sold in the industry overall. It employs uh, 333,000 employers. Uh, part of them are employed uh, in the production of furniture. As you know, Poland is a leader when it comes to production of uh, furniture and uh, wood floors. When it comes to pallets, when it comes to a garden uh, furniture uh, or garden equipment such as uh, fans, uh, uh, we are also leaders. Do we have forests in Poland? Yes, we do. We have lots of forests. As we know, since the Second World War, the area of forests in Poland has increased. It was 20% after the Second World War, now it's over... Um, now it's, uh, now it's uh, more, and uh, it, uh, it is uh, rising year to year. We talked a lot today about the strategy on biodiversity itself, so I will not dwell on this. The main assumption of the strategy is to transform 30% of the European land and sea areas in effectively managed uh, protected areas, including 10% of strict, strictly protected areas. What is mostly worrying uh, for us is uh, the issue of uh, the so-called old growth forests that should be uh, strictly protected, but there is no clear definition of what old growth uh, forest is. 
uh, if you want to produce a uh, house from timber, uh, we do not use uh, um, small sized uh, wood. We need a large, uh, large tree. When, when creating the strategy on biodiversity, uh, did the creators take into account all the aspects or did they omit something important? Well, We've mentioned today the fact that uh, this strategy was ideological in nature. But, but as I've read in the strategy itself, it places an emphasis on environmental issues, uh, but it doesn't take into account the fact that, well, forest is trees, definitely, forest is beautiful uh, areas, uh, recreation, uh, lungs of, uh, of uh, the society, but what is omitted is the fact that forest uh, gives a job, not only to foresters who plant uh, and take care of trees, not only uh, companies that uh, harvest timber, but also to a huge number of people and companies that deal with the processing of wood, uh, sawmills, uh, uh, producers of uh, timber products, and so on and so forth. Given the fact that we do not know what the final outcome of the di uh, biodiversity strategy will be, it is difficult to estimate and to envisage what the impact of the strategy on the situation of the industry will be. Uh, on the basis of what uh, on what uh, of what has been presented, we might try to think about the possible influence. In Poland, uh, we harvest. 40.2 million uh, cubic meters of wood uh, um, in one year and uh, we've got more and more forests so there is no degradation there is sustainable development uh, management of forests uh, 35 million uh, cubic meters of trees go to industry, so we are really leaders uh, in these terms. If the strategy is implemented, uh, state forests, uh, well, you have knowledge on the potential impact of the strategy on uh, the uh, harvesting of timber and uh, availability of wood. In the worst case scenario, if we have minus 40% of harvesting. The estimated amount of wood is 23 million in comparison to uh, the current uh, 40 million. But when we take into account a large size wood, then uh, we are down to nine from 15. And this is a huge difference of major importance to industry. In Poland, uh, wood is purchased by 20,000 uh, companies. I like this mob very much. Each dot shows one company that purchases uh, timber in, from state forests. The Polish wood industry is uh, dispersed. Uh, we've got around 4,000 small and micro enterprises that purchase less than 5,000 cubic meters uh, of wood uh, in a year. Um, we've got seven or eight hundred uh, companies that are medium-sized uh, and we do not have any large companies as in Germany as in Austria that process uh, one million cubic meters of wood we are family business uh, lots of family companies uh, there are large enterprises but uh, mostly small and medium enterprises again uh, let me get back to the presentation by state forest 
tests were uh, it is estimated uh, that the impact uh, the uh, the impact on the availability of raw material in individual regions was estimated and how many companies might uh, go bankrupt because of uh, the collapse in uh, timber harvesting uh, we've got around 4000 uh, companies that are uh, threatened with uh, with uh, going bankrupt in regions such as Podkarpacie, Małopolska, where, um, where the unemployment is uh, relatively high, even without uh, the strategy for biodiversity. And uh, in wood industry, there are lots of employees around. Uh, we've got data here concerning companies that employ over nine uh, workers because they company, these companies need to report um, to the main statistical office. The green columns these are wood industry around 100,000 we are talking about um, companies processing uh, round wood only we are not talking about uh, companies that produce furniture so um, a collapse in wood harvesting will have an impact on uh, the industry. Yes, it will have an impact on the industry. Lots of companies might go bankrupt, but we are not able to say how many. Some people will requalify, um, but it's not that easy to capture that. So it's impossible to say right now. The issue is that, well, on top of the fact that the Polish wood companies are small and medium enterprises, they are also they also operate in rural areas where they are very often the only or uh, one of uh, um, very few employers, which gives rise to to a problem just uh, similar to the one we had after the collapse of uh, the communism uh, where agricultural uh, companies collapsed and there were no other jobs uh, available for these people if the companies collapsed the uh, um, production capabilities uh, of uh, the industry in Poland will decrease so companies will go bankrupt and there, there will be no raw material to produce anything right now we produce around 8 billion uh, euro uh, per year we generate uh, 8 million euro uh, per year as uh, the output that is uh, the sold output of the wood industry so the capabilities uh, output capabilities will be affected uh, however we cannot say to what extent some companies might compensate the lack of uh, raw product uh, in some other ways, uh, for instance, import uh, may be uh, sawn wood. We cannot obtain any round wood uh, from Belarus, from Ukraine. Uh, there are either bans on import or severe limitations in Russia. There is a ban on export. Germany has a problem with bark beetle itself. They will suffer from a, a deficit of round wood. Well, we might uh, get uh, some sewn wood, um, but not round wood. But the demand uh, for uh, sewn wood, well, this will generate lots of issues because, uh, well, it's, it's unlikely that we will uh, get uh, sewn wood from, from the USA. We might want to get uh, sewn wood from. Uh, Siberia, but this will generate other problems because uh, Siberia is affected by climate change right now. So this will have uh, profound consequences, not only for the EU. Um, okay, there will be a decline in the GDP in Poland, a decline in export. Uh, we don't know to what extent. There will be a collapse of revenues to the state budget. Uh, we are unable to, to say in detail what will happen, but we know that there will be a decrease in export and decrease in revenues uh, to the state budget. 
inaczej w ten sposób. Jak może wyglądać najbliższa przyszłość? What can the nearest future look like? That's the title of the next slide. Well, in recent times, wood becomes a strategic raw material. Throughout the past two years, we've noticed huge demand in two biggest economies of the world, China and the USA. The first graph on the left-hand side shows uh, the import of uh, a conifer uh, sawnwood in the USA. Uh, you might not see it clearly, but within one month, this is uh, approximately 3 million cubic meters. On the other hand, we've got China. Uh, China is on a decline when it comes to the import on son of sonwood, but uh, China has radically increased uh, the import of uh, wood uh, raw material from the entire world, from wherever possible. We might say that, well, okay, we export uh, or uh, sonwood is being exported, so a product is being exported, but we need to take into account the fact that the roundwood or sonwood that is bought uh, in bulk is processed into products uh, that we purchase again and uh, this is a situation where we drewnie okrągłym z jednego końca świata na drugi we carry water in roundwood from one part of the world to another or that we we produce a high carbon footprint we increase pollution environment for pollution and so on and so forth but still we use wood as the most ecological um, raw material. And by the way, an example from, from very recent times, a, a transport company provides services to a German company that purchases round wood in Poland. But in order not to go to Poland uh, with nothing, uh, uh, in the car, they bring wood from Germany to Poland. So this is absurd. We um, take water from one country to another and then bring this water back from, from the other country to, to another. Oh, with or without barbecue, that, that's of no importance here. When it comes to USA and China, these countries buy on the markets where the production, the output is uh, the highest. So the USA, they buy in Canada uh, or China buys wood in Russia. In recent times, when it comes to the USA, this first table um, on top, uh, on the left-hand side, USA started to import sawn wood, um, low level of processing from Europe, mostly from Germany. Uh, they ranked second when it comes to the export uh, sawn wood export to the USA, but also Finland, Sweden, and in China, apart from Russia, what appeared on the list is another country for sonwood and for roundwood, wood from Germany goes to China, post uh, bark beetle, and not only bark beetle, but also from other states. And the question uh, can be asked uh, whether us as Europeans within the EU in a broad sense, are we unable to process this wood on our own territory in some way or another? Do we need to, uh, to um, take this round wood away? We want to modernize, retrofit our lives uh, using green wave assumption. That is right. 
So retrofitting the economy, the, 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 the environment, transformation, green transformation. But on the other hand, we've got a situation where we export round wood to lots of countries. Then China uh, wins, so to speak, and they have uh, a ban to, to harvest timber, by the way. Us as Europe and as the world, we uh, we we transport water in containers from one part of the world to another, and there we buy products to bring them back to our country. And can't we afford to produce this uh, in our country? in line with the assumptions of the biodiversity strategy or the green wave in general, we should modify our way of living in Europe. We should change it to a more green one. And we might say that that's just an example of what's going on in Germany, for instance. In Germany, due to export to, to, to the USA, the export of sawn wood, what is lacking is sawn wood for local small enterprises. As a result, there was a man um, who wrote a petition that was signed by over 100,000 people, a petition to do something with it, and we can see a graph showing how the export from Germany to the USA increased over the years. In French, you've got the problem written down, the problem of the French when it comes to uh, the export of oak wood to China. They had uh, major difficulties because of this. And on the right hand side, you've got an, uh, a photo from a Xingdu port in China. That's uh, one fourth of the port. This is one of the biggest uh, ports uh, to which round wood uh, is. Uh, uh, transported from all over the world, and then it is uh, it is um, uh, transported to all parts of China on uh, trucks. And does this have an influence on what's going on in Poland? Yes, it does. We are part of the global economy, and uh, we are also affected. In May, systemic auctions ended, and. Uh, Due to the fact that uh, there was this restricted uh, volume of timber that uh, could be bought, prices uh, uh, went up significantly. The question is, what will happen with the prices if there are there is even less wood available on the market? On the one hand, okay, state forests might have more money, but on the other hand, the question is, how many companies will survive past this trend and whether the Poles uh, in Poland uh, will afford to use wood products because we might be affected really in a detrimental way. What can we do? There are talks being conducted. There is this uh, collaboration between Germany and Austria uh, in terms of the biodiversity strategy and a common um, offensive, so to speak. On the uh, bottom uh, right, uh, in the bottom right corner, you've got a photo taken during a meeting in Vienna. A lot of people present, an initiative of the largest organization from the wood and forest uh, sector concerning uh, the strategy that should be devised. And uh, to wrap up, First of all, the national forest uh, policy should facilitate sustainable usage of timber in order to provide a supply of uh, the raw material locally. Mostly in the following sector, uh, construction sector, because um, uh, this is uh, there is the, the highest uh, CO2 binding. Uh, Thermomodernization is possible. Thermomodernization of the style of living, uh, renovation of the environment. Uh, what's also important is to have a sustainable forest management as the priority for the entire EU. 
we might not have a situation where, and this is the perspective of the industry, which I think is in line uh, with the what, uh, what's the perspective of uh, forestry. We might not, we should not have a situation where Brussels decides on strategic directions of development of the entire EU without taking into account the knowledge of experts and all mm, those who deal with forests on everyday basis, deal with forests, deal with environment, deal with environment and deal with Economy. That would be it. Sorry for speaking for too long. Dziękuję bardzo, panie prezesie. Many thanks. Thank you so much, dear president. Do mikrofonu zapraszam pana Tadeusza Majkowicza, przewodniczącego komisji krajowej niezależnego samorządu zawodowego Solidarność i członka Zakiesu Europejskiego Komitetu Społeczno-Ekonomiczno-Społeczno. Dziękuję bardzo. And member of European Social and Economic Committee. Dear all, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, to start with, I would like to Komisji Krajowej Niezależnego Samorządu Greet you on behalf of the head of Solidarność, that is my boss, Piotr Duda, whom I have the honor of representing today. Thank you very much to the Secretariat uh, for the invitation with uh, uh, Zbigniew Kuszlewicz at the helm for organizing this conference, for uh, this event, for being here, and many thanks to the experts and guests of this wonderful event. This is an exceptionally important day because thanks to this event, we have a direct message to many Poles who unfortunately in their majority have no idea of what the biodiversity strategy 2030 is or the forest strategy 2030 is or what Fit for 55 is, the newest idea of Commissioner Franz Timmermans. Ladies and gentlemen, when we read into the forest strategy of the EU 2030, we learned that there is the lead uh, guiding uh, strategy uh, for 2030 of the EU based on EU uh, strategy for biodiversity. It is a, um, an element in a package of measures to limit the emissions of greenhouse gases by 55% at least until 2030 and to reach uh, climate neutrality of the European Union until 2050. It is also supportive for the EU in better sequestrating the carbon dioxide from the air through natural um, uh, absorbers through taking on uh, um, issues of economy and uh, uh, ecology. Uh, the strategy has as goal uh, achieving biodiversity and stresses the key role of uh, foresters. There are activities included in the strategy for increasing the quality of European forests as well as providing measures to increasing biodiversity and, uh, and robustness of European forests as well as better sequestration of carbon dioxide through better absorption uh, using natural methods in order to mitigate climate change and so on and so on and so on ladies and gentlemen one might say that you know sounds so beautiful but what is this really about as usual you know it's all about the detail and this is precisely what was mentioned by my four speakers in this conference the distinguished experts that took the floor before me as a representative of Solidarność that brought about changes in Poland and Europe 40 years ago, I must say that we do agree with the fact that we need to counteract 
degradacji środowiska naturalnego. The degradation of the natural environment that we need to. Kolejne pokolenia, które po nas przyjdą, zostawi czystą planetę, w której leave a clean planet for future generations that would be a that will be a nice place to live. Yes, we are all for that, and yet we do not agree to decisions being made that are unrealistic and uh, to which all European member states are forced to enact. If a state cannot implement, uh, make them true, uh, the country should not be forced to do that just because somebody uh, made such a plan sitting at their desk in Brussels. All these plans have to be so prepared that they do not bring about an increase in poverty or social unrest. Well, what do we have before us, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let's take uh, the decision of the judge of the Court of Justice of the European Union, uh, who single-handedly made the decision about turning off the tool complex. It is not about a single machine. Uh, we all know that, and we all know that it's about closing down a series of uh, cities and towns. It's about a possible ecological, ecological disaster. This is why we are going to protest at uh, the seat of the Court of Justice of the European Union in order to demonstrate that we do not agree to being so treated as a country, as Poland. We cannot agree to situations where Poland is not treated equally to the Czech Republic. We cannot have uh, uh, countries that are equal, more equal, so to say, than others within the European Union, and we need to do all in our power in order for this draft uh, to be locked in its current shape. If jobs are lost in the furniture industry and in the wood industry, and at the same time households see a significant increase in their spending uh, on energy, that will, be, uh, that will feed into the wave of social unrest and protestation, while this should not be the goal of uh, action taken. It's in, uh, unrealistic to believe that uh, such people will be able to afford electric powered cars. While traditional ones, combustion uh, cars are going to be eliminated by 2030. Currently in Poland, you know, ecology, the share of ecological food uh, food products are around three, four uh, percent. While uh, there is no demand for more because it's too expensive, and the goal is to uh, to have that share start at thirty uh, percent. Uh, will uh, the citizens under Fit for 55 able, be able to afford the ecological food products? Another issue is certificates. And I'm sure that many farms will go bust before they can afford such a certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you uh, maybe trivial uh, handful of things. Every uh, year 20 million lodges is paid for um, cleaning forests for us. So, if we close down the forests, then we can economize. That is probably the conclusion that pseudo-ecologists will come to. But remember that forests are not only a place where we uh, use, which we use for leisure. It's also a source of economic activity for many people who uh, use a forest as a source of additional income as an addition to their um, limited retirement. So, ladies and gentlemen, by increasing the strictly protected areas, we eliminate 
the tak source więc of income strategie. and the basis for maintaining a family a source twarz, of income for many families. Musi być dłuższa Any droga change do has needs celu. to have a human face uh, if we want to achieve our goals. Of course, if we want to have full support, full social support of Czy implemented strategies, then the question is whether we still have time to try and change something in the forest strategy. Well, I am of the belief that yes, we do. If we're talking about the European Economic and Social Committee, on which I have the honor of representing my country, the working schedule has been adopted of work on the forest strategy 2030. On the 22nd, when we are going to protest in Luxembourg, the second hearing of the analytical group is going to take place on the agriculture session and discussion is going to be focused on the draft of the opinion. On the 25th of November, a session of the NAP of the same session um, uh, will take place to focused on the draft and on the 8th and 9th of December the opinion will be adopted during the plenary session. Why am I mentioning this? Well, the European Economic and Social Committee is just an opinion-making institution of the EU, but its uh, uh, position is often taken place into, uh, into account uh, when uh, the opinion is formulated. So I assure you that we will uh, file a number of uh, remarks to uh, the draft, although I am deeply convinced that it is going to be difficult to convince many colleagues from different countries, especially those that have small surfaces of force in their home countries unlike Poland that has no, one third of its surface covered by forests. Unless uh, 3 billion new trees is going to be focused on those countries, the planting projects, I mean, which is something I definitely doubt. In any case, we need to make the effort and hopefully we can open the eyes of those that bring, uh, that uh, blindly accept all ideas under uh, all proposals under uh, the Green Deal. We might open their eyes to the issue. Unfortunately, our time is limited at this conference, so I only touched upon a handful of issues, but I'm sure that the um, entirety of this conference is going to be a valuable educational material. Uh, so uh, once again, let me congratulate you on organizing this event, on the choice of distinguished speakers, and thank you for the opportunity to partake for this exceptional event on a pan Polish and European scale. Thank you very much. Bardzo dziękuję panu przewodniczącemu za wystąpienie i na mównicy zapraszam księdza profesora Stanisława Ormantego. Ksiądz Stanisław Ormant jest profesorem biblistyki, ale także jest leśnikiem i to od trzech pokoleń. Proszę państwa. Trochę by się zmienił profil mojego tutaj The profile of my speech has tak changed a bit uh, when I listened to, to, ma, to the previous speakers. Niektóre sprawy hasłowo przedstawię, dlatego że mamy taką strukturę. I cannot go into details. Uh, hasłowe przedstawienie because we are short of time. Jest, może być pewnym, no trochę niepokojące, bo można Which is a challenge. Na interpretację. So hasła, nie I would like Musicie not to uh, Over-interpret anything. Ideological ideas of uh, the eco-dictatorship. That might be the title of my speech. We are uh, witnesses of uh, some uh, large narratives that surround us. Marxism is on the offensive in uh, Western European states. To jest ideologia ekologizmu, to jest ideologia weganizmu, Ecologist, klimatologizmu, veganism. my odróżniamy zdrową ekologię od ekologizmu, uh, and, uh, my odróżniamy politykę zdrowej 
we need to draw a line between the policy of healthy environment, healthy climate, uh, and between climatologism. It's really important to draw this distinctive line. This is, these are new forms of ideology that derive from Marxism. All the ideologies that are in fashion, they have common roots uh, in fa uh, fascism, genderism, LGBT. And the question is, what elements uh, from the Green Deal can be understood as unhealthy uh, ideology that endangers us? For each ideology to to be implemented. Well, it needs to have a nice packaging. The assumptions of postmodernism are uh, of help here. We need to distract some elements of reality. Why? Because the idea is to create a new society, to build a new world. And some extreme... Uh, um, aspects of these new ideologies. They want to uh, transfer climate into some political element as a quasi-religion. Where does this come from? Well, the ancients said that uh, nature hoarded vacuum. It means that uh, nature can't stand any vacuum. And this manifests itself in the fact that, po, uh, that following Marxism there will be związki partnerskie tej samej płci. Another kind of Marxism that uh, after healthy economy will have unhealthy economy. We will have destructive elements that will affect uh, natura forest vacuum, in natura uh, Poland. Natura hored vacuum. After each values that we will get rid of, there will be other values filling in the vacuum. What's the ecology trap? The trap is that we will choose some healthy elements and we will build upon those healthy elements so that we can lie Państwa, about the reality. The ideology nigdy nie była przypadkiem historii. Has never been a, a side effect of history. Były Totalitarian systems have always been inspired by ideology. For each ideology to be absorbed properly, we need to have this nice packaging. So the construction of the reality a ideologia ekologizmu to jest odwartościowanie nice danej rzeczywistości. Czyli, krótko mówiąc, na jednym so, poziomie briefly, zwierzęta, rośliny, plants, a już niżej trees on one level, więc but somewhere below jest to, widzimy taki biocentryzm. Otóż ideologia, ideology, niby opakowana w jakąś naukę, ona potrafi uderzyć we wszystko. Na czym polegało zakłamanie rzeczywistości? Dziewczynka młoda ze Szwecji, która w tym czasie powinna we być w szkole, podobać nauki i koleżanki. Ona co robi? Pewnymi fajnymi medialnymi frazesami pokazuje naszą elektrownię, która jest wielkim zagrożeniem, ale za granicą, jak tu już było mówione, gdzie powstaje nowa elektrownia, cisza. Gdzie powiedzmy Niemcy są największym producentem węgla brunatnego, cisza. Skąd się to bierze? Proszę Państwa, sam pomysł stworzenia ideologii the very idea of creating ideology has been created in countries where new sources of funding were needed or where the situation was becoming better and better in terms of economy. Doskonałe jakości i konkurencyjnie sobie świetnie radziły na rynku. That were doing great. Mówimy wtedy o przekazie finansowym i rozdrowej ekologii. This is about funding and not ecology. Economic work more. In order for me to earn, I need to deceive you. How am I supposed to do this? Well, by some slogans. 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 Well, by some slogans.
na przykład myśmy nie zauważyli, jak szybko i głęboko ekologizm wszedł w nas, w naszą rzeczywistość. Na przykład blokowanie, pamiętamy, puszczy wycinkę drzew w puszczy białowieskiej i tak Dobrze ci ludzie wiedzieli, którzy blokowali, że drzew się nie dał ratować, że tego obszaru się nie dał ratować. Dlaczego to robili? Ideologia. Co za tym stało? Nakręcanie spirali wielkiego hejtu na świętej pamięci profesora Szyszki, że ma obsesję wycinania drzew. Wszystko to było dobrze obmyślane. Bo proszę Państwa, żebym na Tobie zarobił, ja muszę Cię umiejętnie oszukać. Otóż powiedzmy sobie szczerze, że i cała ta ideologia ekologizmu w swoim wydaniu jest prymitywna na samym dole. To jest prymitywne, że tam dziewczyna w Puszczy Białowieskiej się przywiązywała do tego. Natomiast proszę Państwa, na samej górze to jest doskonale skonstruowana doskonale skonstruowany biznes. I to się jedno z drugim nakręca. Co jest jeszcze ciekawe, że wykorzystywano ludzi młodych do ideologii. Zawsze tak. Dlaczego? Młodzi jeszcze mają przed sobą dużo doświadczenia, dużo do przemyślenia, do przerobienia. Proszę zwrócić uwagę, że na przykład w Niemczech Dzieci śpiewają o swojej babci, porównując ją do zwierząt i klimatu. Czy do najmłodszych lat edukuje się dzieci do klimatu, zwierząt? Dlatego dzieci pouczają rodziców. Inteligencja zła to do siebie, że ona się nigdy nie ujawni na początku jako jakaś siła destruktywna, która chce twojego zła. Więc pewnego rodzaju pułapka. Trzeba mieć wyrobiony osąd krytyczny, żeby uchwycić pod jakimś pozorem dobra, Proszę Państwa, młodzi ludzie wykorzystywani są w sposób manipulacyjny, dlatego że są gotowi do zrywu, do czynu. Systemy totalitarne używają młodych ludzi do najgorszych rzeczy. Naziści, komuniści, Hitlerjugend, Komsomolec, to byli gorliwi. Młodzi, którzy uwierzyli w tę ideę. Czy rewolucja kulturowa w Chinach? Ona była rewolucją w Chinach. Rozmawiałem z wieloma, proszę Państwa, ludźmi młodymi, którzy działają na rzecz ekologizmu. Doszedłem do takiego wniosku. Wszystko, co zwierzęce dla tych ludzi nie jest im obce, ale ciekawe, że zawsze była obca dla nich. Tradycja, patriotyzm, Wartości, religia, wiara, kościół, zupełnie obce. Wszystko, co zwierzęta nie jest obce, co zwierzęce, ale obce inne wartości, znamienne. Proszę Państwa, przeczytam Wam teraz coś, co będzie potwierdzeniem, do czego zmierzają te wielkie narracje ideologii ekologizmu. Mianowicie, obok postulatu zakazu sprzedaży żywych ryb pojawiło się wprowadzenie absolutnego zakazu ich There was this claim for a total ban on the anglers. According to extreme left-wing parties, starting from 2023, there should be a total ban on anglers. On fishing. 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 Czy ta zwana ekologia zdają sobie sprawę z faktu, że nawet gdyby cały świat miał być karmiony roślinami, jak oni chcą, to te rośliny będzie trzeba gdzieś uprawiać. Czy swoim amokłem wiedzą, że uprawy roślin powstaną tam, gdzie rosną tak drogo bronione przez nich i cenne nasze deszczowe? Czy biorą to pod uwagę? Widzimy, że proszę Państwa, taka ideologia uderza w godność, wolność człowieka i w jego etykę. No właśnie. Jeżeli na tym samym poziomie zwierzęta i rośliny tworzy się pewien front ideologiczny, to my możemy nazwać zoopersonalizm. My mamy piękną w Europie wypersonalną koncepcję personalizmu chrześcijańskiego. Zoopersonalizm. Książka pod tytułem Miłość drzew, wzajemnie tak dalej. 
depersonalizacja człowieka. To są bardzo wyroźne, proszę Państwa. Zakaz spożywania mięsa, mówią ideologia weganizmu. Ban eating meat in meat consumption, that's the ideology of veganism, while it's been natural for people, for humans, for thousands of years. In such case, you need to punish Inuit, for example, for eating seals and such. Or at some point you might need to, to strike tiger's teeth out because uh, they are carnivores. Who is this instrumental for, I mean, the ideology of ecologism? Ideology is not a goal um, in itself. It serves a certain goal. I have no problem with that. You know, I am a believer. God said, uh, use uh, the land to your benefit, while the Action as a result of ecologism uh, follows. You know. So the question is whether ecology has, uh, has become um, to a protection against man or is it instead of man? The narration of ecologism, the liberal, uh, the leftist narration says uh, that nature is the highest um, uh, value. So the highest form of protection of nature is not killing animals and not felling trees. Ladies and gentlemen, if so, then I am of the belief that we need to build a Polish school of ecology because world uh, science in those terms is in deep crisis if it uh, it sponsors this kind of uh, uh, narration in terms of, of ecologism philosophy you know, a false concept of the world you know modifies how we see the world and it's something we've already seen in history false anthropology will be always about false philosophy, let's rather say, will always uh, hit a false anthropology and what is that false anthropology? Człowiek well, namely, man is below uh, the world of animals and plants. There is no right, no true ecology with, uh, without true anthropology, right anthropology. If the uh, law, uh, if uh, on the side of the stronger party, this is something we've already gone through. You know, at the root of uh, thoughtless uh, destruction of nature is precisely that kind of thinking. Who is man? What is man's role in nature? There is no European Union and the Polish uh, uh, forestry uh, you know, functioned perfectly. It blossomed. And what is happening now? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go around the role of man. We cannot ignore the responsibility of man in nature like it was assigned uh, upon man by God himself. These new ideological narrations are in the creation of the European Union. So, ladies and gentlemen, please notice that culture, politics and economy should be subservient to man. And if it's the other way around, man is subservient to the economy, to the state, to politics, to the Green Deal. That's a recipe for disaster, which, like those that dominated the 20th century, for example, like those um, owners, uh, landowners in the state, United States um, uh, imported crisis. slaves from Ecologic Africa and that brought about disaster. Ecological crisis is uh, not um, you know, its own source in itself. No, it's always an emanation of the condition of humankind. There is no uh, crisis in ecology as such. It's always, it always starts with a crisis in mankind, in society. It's always the product of, the, of man being lost. So this uh, detachment of man from uh, nature, detachment of politics from morality emanates in all kinds of dangerous ideologies. So, what did uh, Frank, Pope Francis and Laudato see? Integral ecology, uh, ecology of spirit. Man is the subject of action. And false, you know, sick structures, sick ideologies, the produce of man's crisis. There is no different philosophy. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's not allow for thoughtless management of uh, uh, the environment because uh, nature abhors vacuum. It's not up to politicians to make decisions. It's about those competent that have proven their competency in uh, along Pytanie. the last 100 years in forestry, I mean our legacy, our heritage in forestry. Why are we going towards ecologism instead of ecology? I mean the academia, the universities. Well, because they have no similar funding to ecologist organizations. Po co nam uczelnie, po co nam te Why do we wszystko, skoro za to, czy mamy palić węgle, czy mamy budować taką, czy inną, takie zwierzęta? Meat or not, if Proszę these państwa, decisions are made budynku, by celebrities, teenagers, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a Polish school of ecology. Of course, the Green Deal idea is beautiful, of course, yeah, being aligned with nature, etc. But what do I not like? It's worth stressing. A lot of scientists underline that we uh, live in anthropocentric times. What does that mean? Well, it means that a nature without wise intervention of man cannot uh, you know, deal on its own. Entomologists say that uh, you know, not being active in terms of protection, nature conservation will cause uh, the propagation of um, all kinds of insects. Brussels is for ideology, uh, i.e. ecologizing the nature. What is that about? Well, it's all about climate, climatologism, let's say, that's how I call it, because we all know that we need wise climate policy, but not climatolo climatologism. Well, climatologism is what dominates today. They have support in big business that wants to make big buck on it. They want to sell advanced technology in renewable energy. New imperial states wanting to weaken their, their competition in emerging markets impose huge burdens that, uh, you know, um, other countries fall under uh, Antidotum na kłamstwa ekologiczne to edukacja, prawda Ecological lie uh, has to be countered with efficiency and truth. Question to for specialists, climate specialists, investing billions of dollars in projects that change really Nothing. They change. What is their goal? Is it about changing the society or the climate? I would like to hear an answer to this question. I am no specialist. It's what we need is an education of the spirit, of the heart, from the youngest age, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot influence oh, uh, adults anymore. It's about children, young people, news, news. The obsession of felling trees, uh, you know, felling uh, the ancient forest uh, of Białowieża is what is uh, said about uh, Professor Szyszko, but this is outside the context. It's about chosen trees only. Education is what we need. It's necessary, starting from experts responsible for informational agenda in uh, forest enterprises. We need specialists, professionals with the right kind of knowledge and experience. This is what we need. Media that is well informed because we cannot do without the media. It's all about PR today, you know. But that's not what we need. We need proper knowledge. This is why people are so important. People, competent people, professionals, wise people. Permanent knowledge, permanent education.
tutaj czcigodny dyrektor to trzy no. miesiące go to kosztowało opracowanie. Tak. Preparing this was tak. three what is a three month endeavor. Owocuje. Of course, knowledge is a cost, you know, it burns, you have to burn certain costs, but it's an investment. What about pedagogy? The rule is very simple in order to to defend what you know, you need to learn about what you don't know yet. Our mission is to educate. W niektórych państwach zachodniej Europy mają już zaledwie 40% rodzinnych gatunków roślin zwierząt. Bo je zniszczyli, bo nie umieli użytkować. Natomiast ktoś z Europy nas porucza, jak mamy chronić puszczel, jak mamy opadać gospodarkę leśnicy. Uczyć się od prawdziwych ekologów leśników. Pytanie, czy ekocentryści stanęli kiedyś w obronie polskich ziemi, aby nie przechodziła w obce ręce, czy stanęli kiedyś w obronie polskich lasów, czy protestowali, kiedy zrodził się pomysł, aby z lasów zrobić jednoosobową spółkę państwa skarbu? Czy zasadzili chodzi of uh, making Polish forests a single um, business entity. Well, it's about nature and not political bureau being in charge of things. Let's defend that approach. Ladies and gentlemen, there are wise people in Polish forestry, professionals, highly educated people who have really proven themselves in practice. And from this stage, I would like to thank Mr. Tomaszewski. As a forester myself, I have followed for dozens of years Polish forestry along its ups and downs. I have been observing how Director Tomaszewski managed to steer um, through all kinds of situations. Why am I mentioning this? Well, because we need to use the wisdom that we have, the authorities that we have, the experts that we have, because we need them in these difficult, bumpy times. A wise boss uh, always builds his activity on wise people, on competent people. Let's build on young people, sure. Of course, they run faster, but the older ones are wiser. They know the way. That's it. Yes, let's use their guidance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Professor. Przechodzimy do następnego punktu, którym jest okay, let's debata move on to the next item on the agenda. This is czasu. a debate discussion. We don't have much time. But still, there probably are some voices from the room. Please formułowanie myśli. ask very short question or give very short comments. Pozwolę sobie, że się przedstawię. Nazywam się Grzegorz Pieńkowski. Grzegorz Pieńkowski. Skąd ja tutaj, geolog, sekretaria, podejmuję również geologię i ten obszar. A myślę, że miałbym wiele do powiedzenia, jako nie zdążę na temat związków, jakie wynikają z tego, czym się geologia zajmuje, o czym dzisiaj rozmawiamy. Ja zajmuję się lasami przyszłości, głębokiej Te badania, które dotyczą lasu sprzed 200 milionów lat, mogą nam wiele powiedzieć o tym, co się dzieje dzisiaj. Ten stąd to bioróżnorodność to jest problem teaches us to be humble because biodiversity is a very complex issue and indeed if we want to be responsible and if we want to take action that will increase biodiversity or maintain biodiversity it is not enough to use certain simple mechanisms that are present in the strategy. It is a matter of fact that uh, given current climate change, the forests that will be left alone uh, might uh, face uh, different challenges uh, that we cannot envisage right now. We don't know in what direction the climate change will go. But let me share some experience with you environment and uh, the impact of decisions taken at EU level. Let me get back to the previous years where we had a heated debate on shale gas. 
back then, what was really helpful was the creation of a research network or a working group that was composed of experts, but it was an open group with the representatives of NGOs invited. And this group worked out uh, some positions for the European Commission, position on threats, possible or imagined threats concerning the exploitation of shale gas. Back then, I was the, the president of the Commission of the um, group. And let me share uh, with you the following experience. Such a formula can be effective, and we should talk about uh, such effective steps that lead to the goal. The goal is to stop, um, to stop ideas that are not wise and that will not improve uh, the situation concerning biodiversity and that can bring harm. Uh, I uh, would recommend a letter from 11 uh, states um, uh, from March uh, suggesting the setting up of uh, such a group. And I think that we should make efforts to create such a group because uh, arguments uh, that uh, are based on science uh, might convince uh, the Commission. And it is very often the case that that those who deal with some things, they do not have knowledge on the legal, on the scientific uh, foundation, scientific facts. And let me tell you, uh, and let me warn you about uh, um, overestimating the ideological uh, argument. And I, uh, I do not agree with the priest uh, that uh, spoke a moment ago. I think that uh, priest Presenting the problem in this way might uh, bring harm and will not benefit us, definitely, because I know what discussions look like at the European level, and I would uh, not uh, talk about ideology. I also have Christian roots. But it is really important to present arguments that are based on science and not on ideology. Thank you. Thank you for your voice. Uh, anyone else? Pan dyrektor. Dyrektor. Wojciech Grochala. Ladies and gentlemen, I was provoked. Jakby się do tego odniosę. Uh, by the previous speaker. Tak, uh, let me tell you the following thing. Dużo do emerytury, więc mogę Not dużo, much left tak before I retire. Myślę, że jesteśmy spóźni... I think tak, jesteśmy we spóźnieni z pewnymi działaniami. Are late. We are too late with some actions. Drugie, co jest and uh, istotne, what's very crucial is that in all the activities za, za taking place all over the world, pieniądze, pieniądze, well, uh, pieniądze. Money is what's behind these activities. Polityka. Money is most important. First comes money, that comes politics. This politics that is uh, shaped by, by, uh, by money. So all the actions that are taken, uh, they are taken because of money. And uh, the priest said that certain ideological ideas, slogans are created, uh, but in fact, what's behind the strategy of biodiversity protection is a great lobby that wants to earn money. And uh, this lobby today wants to push some countries away from the market so that they cannot compete in the market. So they want to do this through certain slogans, uh, ideological slogans that will attract young people. And if we do not realize this, then we will fight uh, in vain. We have a tsunami ahead of us uh, with huge funds in it. And uh, if we do not it is against us, and it uses uh, uh, some catchy slogans, uh, catchy images. 
przekazu, który z jednej z polskich telewizji się pokazał, mianowicie Let me give you an example pokazana from została the serenka TV biegająca po lesie, a następnie w następnej an przepitce was filmowej shown running była running in the forest, wypatruszona leżąca and na then you could Żeby see this myśli, animal lying on the table killed uh, to, to take meat to, uh, from it. And, and uh, łowiectwo well, przekazane w ten sposób zawsze będzie jako to B. Hunting is presenting in this way as something bad. And this is ideology. If you show first beautiful forest grown by foresters and then you show logging, felling of trees, then whatever you do, you will lose because this picture is very, very sad. And despite our education, despite our efforts, we will lose. Because there's huge money behind it. Uh, some people are trying to create certain reality in order to make money. And the stories about uh, the fact that China and the USA are winning today, well, these are just stories because we... And let me refer to China very briefly. My daughter, towards the end of the 1990s, she visited France as an au pair, as a babysitter. She, she was working there in the summer. Uh, she took care of grandchildren of certain, uh, certain people, French people. And they worked in French companies located in China, the grandparents. And the truth Truth is, all large uh, concerns, uh, corporations of, uh, from Western Europe, they move to China, to Bangladesh, and they earn money there. They build their own potential, um, financial potential that is really, really huge. And they do not want uh, a situation where there is competition for them in Central Eastern Europe that can compete with them in the market. So, it makes no sense for them to, to process wood in Europe. They prefer to do all, all of this in China and sell this as complete products, finished products. So the situation is really difficult. We are too late. And the discussion that is ongoing now is, is too late. On the other hand, I am aware of the fact that we are trying to counteract uh, a huge and powerful lobby because the majority of states, particularly in Western and Southern Europe, they have no forests. So for them, the ideological slogan to protect forests, well, the slogan is great for them. And it's really difficult to, to explain to them that um, the awareness uh, when it comes to forests is really, really low and that it makes simply no sense. Uh, so the things that are shown in the media, well, this uh, destroys uh, the reality. And I'm a bit pessimistic, I say, but uh, until uh, we have a real, eco uh, well, a real environmental catastrophe, well, people won't realize uh, what's going on. Unfortunately, such catastrophe might happen uh, very quickly, uh, and it might be much worse than uh, such uh, adverse weather conditions as hurricanes, uh, droughts, and so on and so forth. We cannot uh, passively look at what's going on in nature, because uh, we will face a situation where there, there will be severe catastrophes, and uh, we should not uh, Lying to ourselves. Well, unfortunately, we don't have much time. Okay. On an end note, the conclusion is as follows. In my opinion, if today we do not realize and make the society aware of the threats, our voice will not be heard at all. Thank you for your insight. Mamy jeszcze no, czas powiedzmy na dwie wypowiedzi. Two more comments. Bardzo proszę, pan Zamaszewski. There's time for two more comments. Później, Director Zamaszewski. Ja w zasadzie też nie chciałem zabierać well, I didn't want to, z uwagi na ramy czasowe. To comment, but I was inspired by the previous speaker and I would like to refer to it. Chcę wierzyć, że I would like to believe that w tej dziedzinie geologicznej in geology z partnerami z tak zwanego sektora 
with the partners from uh, the NGO sector, uh, the NGO sector that uh, that for you it is contents that matter, scientific knowledge, and that such arguments are heard. It is beyond doubt that the current circumstances are related to a, a case um, before the um, Constitutional Tribunal of the European Union. And in that case, I try to use uh, some substantive arguments. And then half of the court looked at, uh, was awakened, so to speak. And then the, the judge looked at the watch and said, well, the time is over. So I decided to write a letter. And when I wanted to write this, on a paper, and they had a look at it. They said, well, the letter was um, uh, given to us too late, and uh, we could not uh, take it into account. And the same goes for discussions uh, with the representatives of NGOs. You might talk to them for a very long time. You might use all the arguments that you have. They will not agree with you because, unfortunately, it is a kind of religion. But it's good if you succeeded. Well, you are an exception. And protection is about exploitation, right? Now, Director Kozio. Thank you. Let me stay within this uh, topic of biodiversity, but I wanted to, uh, to talk about facts that you might be aware of, and I would like to focus on forest management, but think about it as uh, managing forest uh, genetic resources. The assumptions of the strategy lead to the exclusion from um, practices of uh, significant areas of forests, as uh, has been mentioned many times uh, today by uh, the previous speakers. Wood needs to be derived from other uh, parts of the globe if it is not uh, harvested in our part of the world. So it will be uh, harvested in places where there are no certification processes and uh, where uh, there is no sustainable management of uh, forests. In Poland, uh, there are 70, 61 uh, tree species in Europe, it is uh, 543 species of trees. Uh, in the world, we've got 80,000 of tree species. And let's imagine the following situation. We might not lose any kind of a tree. In Europe, we will certainly lose some, but in the world, if we really harvest wood in other parts of the world, then, and I'm talking about trees only, not about uh, thousands of uh, or millions of other species, the loss will be enormous. Let's compare our uh, number of species with 8,800 tree species in Brazil or 500, over 500 tree species in Colombia. Similar numbers in Madagascar, Estonia uh, and Indonesia. Biodiversity can be depleted to a significant extent in those places. 
As I've mentioned, in Poland or in, po in Europe, we, we will not lose any tree species. We have not lost any. But without active protection, lots of species, particularly in uh, Mediterranean hotspots, where there are most of the species, the situation is dramatic there. There are, for instance, only 100 trees left of a given species. In Serbia, just two um, um, trees of a given species, just two trees left, without active protection, they, uh, they will cease to exist. So they need active protection, definitely. What, uh, what is strange to me is that the expert knowledge, well, it is there, it is available. It is uh, tens of thousands uh, of publications that the European Commission should uh, be based on when it, uh, derives a when it devises a document for the entire Europe. And it's really a wonder for me why this has not happened, why this they, have, they have not uh, based their assumption on the scientific knowledge which is available. I hope we will reach out to the European Commission and change their mind. Uh, last week, a conference on genetic resources took place uh, for agriculture and food. Uh, I had the pleasure to take part in the conference. Natomiast tam bardzo wyraźnie w tych opracowaniach się mówi. What was said very clearly there was that uh, three species, particularly the ones that do not have uh, huge populations, they require active protection. Uh, Euphorgen uh, also requests such things. So, it is really strange to me that these recommendations are not taken into account. As an example, uh, let, me, um, let me tell you the following thing. We've got in Europe 260 um, um, rosace trees. These are trees that do not have large populations. And 170 are of a given type. And uh, the individual trees, individual small groups of trees, and without active protection, uh, they will simply extinct. And this is half of our species. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bardzo dziękuję za ten ważny głos. For this important uh, input. Ostatni głos. Pan the very last Dawidziuk. voice, Dyrektor Dawidziuk. Ladies and gentlemen. When the strategy on the protection of biodiversity 2030 was announced in the Polish Forestry Association, we had a look uh, together with our experts uh, from the practitioners, but also scientists. We analyzed the, the impact of this document on the functioning of the Polish forestry. We prepared our position, and this position was uh, devised jointly with the expert from the Association of Forest and Wood Engineers. This is a voice of uh, several 1,500 members of the societies. We wanted our voice to be heard and to be significant when, uh, when impacting the influence of the strategy in its current shape, so 10% of exclusion. Uh, from uh, management practices, so exclusion of 10% of forests uh, from uh, practices and in the Polish reality this will be concentrated on the exclusion uh, of forest areas. And we can assess that this will bring about huge risk 
and that the functioning of the model of forestry in Poland will be changed profoundly. It is based on multifunctional forest industry, forest economy right now, and this change will uh, have impact, uh, and this impact has been discussed in detail today when it comes to social aspect, economic aspect, and uh, threat for the functioning of uh, the forest and wood sector, which in the Polish uh, context uh, is of significant social and economic value. These arguments have been raised uh, also in our position. We also um, paid attention to the fact that the model of the forestry in Poland uh, um, in the past de decades have been based on the implementation uh, of, a, of a multifunctional forest economy over the last decades has led to a situation where there were tangible results for the development of forest resources but also for biodiversity and it gave rise to creating a wood and forest sector which has a tangible uh, importance for the society and for economy. That's why we called for um, a change because we do not want to have a monofunctional model of functioning lots of areas included from use and intensification of activities on the remaining areas we called for this to be changed in the strategy because it would be dangerous for the uh, ecosystems, for the society and for economy. And we called for Minister of Climate that we addressed our appeal to. We called for some um, important actions. And the uh, minister was very diplomatic. Uh, we wanted to ask the, the minister to undermine, to question the model that is being imposed on us in the strategy of food biodiversity and to create uh, conditions to implement, further implement uh, the model of Polish forestry that is based on multifunctionality and uh, other benefits. So then we can we can further develop our forests. We need to make joint effort not only in Poland in our sectors, but also to include arguments of the circles that are related to the multifunctionality of forest management. So the forest and wood. Uh, sector and also internationally as the Polish forest uh, society we have contacts with our counterpart organization in Germany we meet uh, regularly and we speak with one voice when it comes to the assessment of uh, the implementation of uh, the strategy and its consequences and we think that we should extend the multinational nature of our actions when it comes to the assessment of the consequences of biodiversity strategy implementation. If Poland is alone when it comes to the presentation of its model and its position, on uh, the assessment of biodiversity protection strategy, then this might be understood as part of an anti-EU narrative uh, of a political nature, and this uh, will lead to us losing scientific arguments, which is why the today's meeting that uh, is broader than one or two sectors only is a good way to go. So congratulations to the organizers. Uh, thank you for facilitating 
the exchange of opinions in an international group and also intersectoral group. I think this is the right way to go. And I agree that we cannot um, overestimate, uh, we cannot um, refer to ideological elements uh, too uh, strongly because we might lose a lot. This might harm us and our uh, substantive arguments uh, will simply not be heard if we refer to ideology. Okay. Semantically, ideology is something positive. I talked about uh, ideology that uh, engages certain destructive elements. So the truth is that, well, truth cannot be replaced with diplomacy. I understand that diplomacy is uh, important. I understand that. But we should not replace uh, truth with diplomacy. We or against problem, not against humans. Truth is liberating. Okay, let this be the conclusion of today's uh, conference. It's a pity we need to stop right now. We don't have uh, any time left, and uh, we can have a there are still some items on the agenda. Now, Minister Paweł Sałek, please uh, summarize the conference. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will try to speak briefly. A lot of years before I retire, but I need to speak. Referring to the joke made earlier, big thank you to the director, Józef Kubica, for helping with the organization of this conference. Thank you to the Solidarność Trade Union for hosting this debate. Big thank you to Zbyszek, Zbyszek Kuślewicz Jacek Cichocki, whom we a bit forgotten during this uh, uh, conference and his uh, link to the trade union and the conference in itself. Thank you to all the speakers uh, that do care about the protection of environment, forest, that uh, understand uh, all the factors, uh, social factors, economic factors, substantive factors. Thank you for sharing this knowledge uh, with us. And now, moving on to my notes taken during the entire conference, uh, this might be my individual approach, but I I think I'm entitled to, uh, to one uh, if I was asked to summarize this conference. So in the order of individual uh, speeches, uh, let me tell you the following things. The consultation for the biodiversity strategy, there was one question that, uh, that uh, Look as follows. Are you in favor of setting a European, Europe-wide goal for biodiversity? So, are you in favor of adopting a legally committing a goal of reducing greenhouse gases in Europe? From our perspective, this is the same. This might be problematic, but well, we do agree that wood is the most ecological uh, raw material. At the same time, wood is uh, energy storage. If we have a look at, uh, sorry, a CO2 storage, if we have a look at the, Euro uh, the Climate uh, Convention, we have this WPD um, indicator that says that wood stores uh, CO2 for 30 years and so on and so forth. So wood is a container for CO2. This is the truth. It was really worrying what the director Tomaszewski said, because if the optimist, in the optimistic version, we will have 2.7 million hectares excluded from um, the management. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge issue for Poland. 
In my opinion, in the first place, forest and wood energy um, is important. Thank you for your presentation presented by Paweł Szczyński. It was really important. Furniture industry and wood industry in the first place will be affected by the provisions of the strategy that will become legally binding. And there is certain contradiction, it was mentioned in some presentations, because if we have a look at the Convention on Biodiversity, these documents, well, at some points they are contradictory. And analogically, we move to uh, the climate. Um, if we have a look at the European scale, it is not in line uh, with the Climate Convention and the Paris Agreement from 2015. In the Paris Agreement, there is a talk of uh, climate neutrality, uh, greenhouse gas uh, emissions reduction, and at the European scale, we talk about decarbonization, which is the removal of CO2 and uh, removing of of, uh, and, uh, and changing the energy mix. Our friend uh, Georg uh, from Germany, um, what he said was uh, very important and interesting. He said that we should be united, we should act together. Yes, we need to build coalitions at the European scale. We uh, all speak with one voice and we have common interests. I would also like to thank the representative of Estonia uh, who very synthetically showed on the example of Estonia and the presentation was very similar to what we have in Poland. He showed what the situation looks like and uh, there was an interesting slide on how forests are captured in various documents uh, at EU level. There are lots of documents at EU level on, on the protection of uh, air, climate, cities, and so on and so forth. And what was lacking was uh, uh, one strategy that uh, is about to be uh, prepared in the EU. The next item in my summary was well, we have strategy on biodiversity for a strategy, but uh, those two arguments uh, should be treated jointly because, uh, well, first, forest strategy was to be adopted, the EU forest strategy, but then the, the order was changed and it was decided that first the biodiversity strategy would be adopted. Mamy, widzimy, Yet another issue to to, that is related to energy w zimowym, i to jest do in the winter package, że biomass from uh, highly biodiversified areas should not be used for energy production. So theoretically, if we have a look at the Polish forests and their biodiversity, then theoretically this biomass should not be used. But these provisions are in other documents and someone must read it because they are all separate. Lots of documents on climate, on air, and uh, at some point, well, they, they have lots of different provisions. It's important that 2.5% uh, um, of the GDP um, is accounted for by furniture and wood industry. And let me quote uh, Minister, uh, Prime Minister Morawiecki, who once said that the Polish uh, furniture uh, sector is a, a pearl in the crown of the entire Polish economy. That's true. The furniture uh, sector is really important and it could not exist without uh, state forests. And this form of uh, legal organization, so it, will, it, won't, it wouldn't be possible without uh, state forests. So state forests uh, were the shell where this pearl was uh, being created over time and we need to realize this. This piece of information provided by Mr. Gruszyński related to uh, how many companies, how many families um, operate a company that is related to wood. Well, this is extremely important for um, 
family mm. businesses. Rzeczywiście and uh, tak yes, definitely, we should say that timber becomes a strategic raw material. And takie obserwacje należy mieć. This is the observation that we should uh, share. Thank you for uh, the information and presentation tak, tak jak from the European Social Committee. Yes. Głosu wiążącego, you do not have a binding voice, but it's definitely worth talking about things that are important to us. And it's interesting legislacji unijnej trzeba to How robić. Many different paths regionów, need to be followed uh, within the European legislation, different committees, Unii different commissions, i tak different councils, and so on and so forth, lots of bodies. To, but it was really important what the vice president said. It was presented over a time axis. What will happen um, over the next couple of months, years, when it comes to the preparation of those documents and legislative uh, actions? One more remark, the new green deal in the communication of the Commission it is stated that 3 billion trees are going to be planted until 2030. While we know perfectly well that Poles, Polish foresters, plant half a billion trees every year. So at least one of the goals and of biodiversity uh, will be fulfilled by us uh, uh, next year, uh, counting from 2020. Many thanks to uh, Professor uh, Ormand for his uh, presentation uh, centered on philosophical and spiritual approach. A few valuable sentences were enunciated that are worth bearing in mind. Laudato Si was mentioned by Pope Francis, which tends to be interpreted in, um, let's say, various ways. And on a final note, ladies and gentlemen, well, uh, let me say just that we need to um, you know, carry on and uh, fight for, uh, fight in our own interest. Like Mr. Like Professor Shishko said, whether in 21st century, do we need science at all? Or is everything, or is anything, everything going to be voted? Can anything be voted, really? Uh, like in the case of the disappearance of species of trees in many countries. So that's the question to bear in mind in light of today's arguments and the issues raised today, whether we really need mm, science at all in the 21st century. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Professor Niedźwiecki, for leading us through this conference uh, 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 within the time frame with only a quarter of an hour of delay and to Mr. Markiewicz for moderating this meeting. Thank you. Let the forest reward you. Thank you very much, dear Minister, for wrapping up this conference. I would like now to ask the representative of the committee that collected the applications today, Mr. Medarski. The floor is yours. Pani Przewodniczący. Dear President, ladies and gentlemen, the Applications Committee constituted by uh, Piotr Borkowski of your staff war, Professor Dr. Dr. Brzeziecki of the Main School of Agriculture, Professor Piotr Mederski of the Natural Sciences University in Poznań. Odczytam, bo to 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the numbers. 5 plus 5 times 2, 5 general applications and 5 different ones broken down into those concerning nature and 5 additional ones concerning industry. The motions that were formulated based on the documentation from the speakers and based on the speeches and presentations and based on the documentation prepared as responses, as expertise in response to strategy for biodiversity. My first general conclusion is about the expertise which was particularly underscored by Professor Brzeziecki. Since the 1950s, we have been observing the introduction of strict passive conservation, which does not contribute to increasing biodiversity. Instead, it decreases biodiversity. And for others. These will also include, so to say, postulates or statements for the use of argumentation, for the use of the group mentioned during the discussion by the gentleman who shared his experience from previous work, for the use before the directive is formulated, because we currently have a strategy for biodiversity, which is a document delineating the direction, it's a directional document. So so this conference is an opportunity to form conclusions and prepare documentation and argumentation. Tree stands and their conservation require a man's activity. A passive approach will cause their degradation via insects and fungi. What is proposed in the strategy is a risk for ecological functions and poses economic risks increasing uh, the protected areas uh, and the scale proposed will increase issues outside Europe, like in the case of tropical forests, which was mentioned uh, in the case of the outside European areas. 10% of land territory in many countries, including Poland, uh, that goal would require implementing at the expense of forests. That would mean that up to 40% of forest area would have to be laid off. That would have negative consequences economically wise and socially wise. Decrease of use of timber would decrease by 30 percent, the uh, um, state revenue standing at 2.5 billion zlotys. Uh, the uh, reduction of harvesting will reduce employment in the wood industry and will marginalize the Polish wood industry internationally. General conclusions. Impact on the environment. From an environmental point of view, applying strict protection does not increase biodiversity. Instead, it reduces usually uh, biodiversity generally. Based on studies carried out in Poland since the 50s, 1950s, and based on experience from North America, laying off and strictly protecting big forest areas should be evaluated as negative based on numerous examples coming from different uh, countries all around the world. The protection requires active participation of man. It's also negative from the point of view of increasing adaptational capacity of forests towards ongoing and expected climate change. And from the point of view of playing, uh, forests playing their function, and uh, also from the point of view of mitigation of climate change, the challenge of current uh, 
of our times is not the increasing of uh, territory strictly protected. Instead, uh, the challenge is to implement methods for forest uh, management that are positive, contributive towards their multidimensional character. In light of high risk uh, of Polish forest uh, from cambio fagus and, um, and other insects in Poland, uh, introduction of high uh, surface, large surface uh, forest without protection, active protection, uh, points to the need of um, bringing into question this requirement. Forestation not meeting uh, the conditions included in the strategy uh, should rather be going towards um, forests of mixed um, uh, specimens that's adapted to the local environment, which will reduce the risk of uh, forests dying. In strict protection, such action is not possible. Impact on the economy, I think this is a response to many representatives of the wood industry. This is not a closed-ended list. Just let me note that. So if any of those representatives would like to add other points to this list, then you are kindly asked to address the members of the committee. The increase of use of coal will increase the deficit of raw material, which will translate into changes into price. Uh, price differences, price changes, and will reduce access to raw material. It will increase the transport of raw material to the receiver, which will increase emissions. Reduction in uh, supply will uh, translate uh, into the industry, sawmill industry, and reduction by 40% might cause uh, the liquidation of as much as 90% of business enterprises due to a high participation in the Polish market wood, uh, in wood industry of small and medium enterprises. It will reduce employment in wood industry, and particularly in rural areas, which will lead to marginalizing the role of Polish uh, wood processors internationally. The reduction in revenue of the state forests, which is the last conclusion, this is a response to the document that has been 30 years old in a, since its implementation. This document was created before certification systems, before many acts uh, currently in force in Europe including before the Rio conference. The scale of reduction of revenues of state forests as a result of laying off will cause a breakdown in the self-financing of forest, state forests, which is an element of the system since 1991. Thank you very much. That's all in terms of conclusions. You can see the slide that uh, was created, was, you know, created by the Commission, which has a list of aspects that are taken into account when integration is discussed of concepts and their implementation in terms of full protection of ecosystems in a comprehensive manner with full inclusion of different parameters of the ecosystem. In the central part, we see this uh, web diagram which illustrates the importance of these aspects that are factored in in such a comprehensive approach. This is about balancing two elements, biodiversity, that is the focus of this meeting, but in the upper part you can see also uh, timber and biomass mentioned today during the conference. This uh, mysterious uh, diagram shows you that two key elements and in the integration between 
Nature Conservation, czyli w Nature Conservation i ochrony środowiska. And other aspects. Among those other aspects, there's timber, wood. So aspects connected with the economy. That is the raw material. That's the topic of today's meeting. Many thanks, Professor. Thank you, thank you. The round of applause demonstrates that the conclusions are acclaimed and binding after today's conference. Right, thank you very much. Many thanks to the whole team that has worked uh, hard all day today. And it is now my role to summarize this conference. I would like to pick up on the thank yous by Minister Sawek. Let me add on top what, of what he said, all of you that have been with us today. Thank you for spending this day with us. Many thanks to all the speakers. Many of you have joined us from distant places. We are very happy to have uh, to have hosted you here. Many thanks to CIRP. CIRP uh, did a huge, uh, huge work here. Yesterday, thank you, CIRP yesterday worked until uh, midnight and everything was prepared for us today in the morning perfectly, like it's usually the case uh, in uh, working with CIRP. Thank you very much for that. Now, is there anybody else whom I would like, uh, whom I need to uh, thank? Uh, would anybody else like to take the floor before we conclude? Uh, if not, then two messages. Please leave your headsets at the entrance before you leave because we need to have as many as we had in the morning. And the second message is uh, lunch or dinner is waiting downstairs. Thank you very much and see you downstairs.